Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting being held this December 15th, 2021. It is now 5.05 p.m. The meeting is being held in the main meeting room, the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Now, um, we're going to start abbreviating our announcement on, um, but the meeting is being held in a hybrid uh, method uh, per the governor's orders uh, and <clears throat> people are encouraged to attend the meeting if they have a specific topic that they want to tech, talk to the select board to as opposed to being in a uh, hybrid uh, method the meeting is going to be transmitted by, via zoom and um, that can be found on the town of deerfield's website it also, ha we have a dial in for remote is the phone number is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. The meeting ID code is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. Uh, The select board will be going into executive session pursuant with general law, chapter 30A, section 21, article three, the select board may enter into executive session to conduct a strategy and res with respect to collective bargaining or litigation with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL, CIO police, and UPSEU highway under General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Article 2, to conduct st strategy sessions to participate for negotiations, preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel or contract negotiations with the town administrator as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigation portion of the town and the chair so declares. So moved. I will second that. All those in favor. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. We'll now be going into a breakout room. And we'll return right around 6.30, we'll right? Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, as soon as that's done, we'll be re returning to open session. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. We're going back to open session now. Uh, first thing on our agenda now is appearances. We've got uh, Paul Oshesky here. Yeah, sure. Mike, Paul, Mike should be live. If you just you can pick it up and yourself. walk away. Did you hit record okay. in that? Yes, we're recording. Yep. This on? Yes, you sure. Uh, Paul Olszewski, uh, 154 North Main Street, South Deerfield. Um, I just want to update you guys since I last spoke with you. In case you got me the letter. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's just picking on yeah. me. Um, so I, I brought that letter to the three parties, uh, Merrimack College, mm -hmm. because the project has started. They were very happy to receive it. They know where they stand. Good. Uh, the gentleman from Andover Organ Company has it, and also the gentleman, uh, uh, John Bishop from Organ Clearinghouse. So if you go the website, it's on there. Okay, good. It says it's listed. And like it's I available. said, it's, it's this time of the year. So we're going to see, yep. and Casey and I have had discussions as to you know, in terms of cost and, and all that stuff. So let's, you know, one step at a time. But I go in and I check the organ. I did, um, uh, the gentleman from uh, Andover, Oregon suggested, and I believe this, this gentleman here also said, about putting the moth flakes around okay. the bellows. I've never seen any kind of, you know, droppings. I haven't either, yeah. Mice and all that it's stuff. Clean. It's cold. Yep. And that thing's got more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Sure does. So I check it. The thing is, it's so cold. Actually, they want to come in where it's warm, and it's not warm there. So, right. But as soon as they smell the moth flakes, they'll just they'll just leave. okay. When I check it. There's nothing there. So, um, but I, I think Merrimack's got promise. Um, now they have the letter. Uh, they have started the project up again, and hopefully by the time late later winter, early spring, when they find they get to that point where there's there's space that they're supposed to put an organ there. Yeah. That'll 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 uh, start the process hopefully going that's great but like i say john bishop having it out online 
if, if nothing else, it's identified. It's a Westfield right. plugin. Yep. It's known. Like I say, it's it's on the web and let's people see, may you know, be aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm That's not great. expecting, you know, with the holidays and everything else at the beginning of the year. And yeah. Um, I don't expect much movement. Miramac is really, like I say, right now, still. Um, Hopefully. Uh, I, I, I feel there's promise there. That's great. And that would be a good home. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank it, you, it would be a good so, yeah. Anyways, well, but thanks I just wanted to let that. you guys know. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Thank thanks you. Thanks for doing very, that. Very Appreciate very it very nice. much. Thank you. That's great. And Happy for you, holidays. for those of you that are watching, this is the same Paul Shesky that is ultimately responsible for lighting up Shiglo for us. Yes. And Thank you. And, and coordinating it. Well, 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 let me just put it this way: we're sort of a discreet group. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of the. the I've never known you to be discreet. Um, kudos to, and he'll probably kick me for saying this, but Phil Gilmore is our DCR representative. We have to have our yeah. support or a, a, rep, a monitor or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Well, Phil I and I are the ones. We were up Sunday. We the other night when it around ten thirty. Remember when it said it was coming around ten thirty? Yeah. Eleven o'clock. Yeah. I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, my phone's going off. Whew. And it blasted, but we did a major um, ma uh, upgrade, not an upgrade, uh, to all the lines, and yeah. it held. That's great. But the, the lights, we've developed something, how we can make them more weatherproof. Um, right. Basically, a silicone, and they, they've held. And, yeah. You know, now, now the water is our biggest thing. The wind, actually, it wasn't the biggest thing. But the other night, oh, man, it, it, poured. Just, it just blew. But yeah. a couple weeks before, it was a son of a gun, too, and yes. it held. That's great, um, but Paul, well, it we, makes really, really people. Everybody have no are just, idea how many people comment. On no, D, D, it's and so DC, yeah, and Phil says DCR just loves it. I mean, yeah. it's great. It's one of the most beautiful it, things. Just, I mean, people look at it for generations. Coming Absolutely, and back and forth. since I was a little kid. But our hope is, and uh, what we want to do is, the lines are tired. Mm -hmm. There's nine lines, um, and they need to be. Um, we, we have a new a new design. And Are they cable or what? What is basically it? it's nine lines. So what you do is you tie them off at the points, then you run them up. Well, and then we the power cords go around and then yep. into the down at the base of the you know by the stairs there's the four GFI outlets. Okay. That that's how it runs. I see. And then we lock that up. Yeah. We are trying a, a redesign where instead of us taking like two and a half three hours, it might take us an hour and a half. Yeah. But it's a redesign. We we need to. We need some assistance, um, and I know people have been interested. Um, we've, you know, we've got our thoughts as to how you know to fund this because Bob, you know, Doc Schmidt was, he was the last touch of the Rotary Club that in the oh, paper, okay. I can tell you that because it goes all the way back to World War II. Is that right? Yeah, yeah when, when it started. When the, yeah, when the, my when father the house, made the yeah. original A-frame for it. Oh, What's no that? kidding! My father made the original A-frame yes. for it. Yes. Yeah, but then after the, you know, when the house, the Summit House burnt down. Yeah. Um, then. I think they used to do. That's a different story about that, the family that we won't get into. <laughs> no, we won't, we won't talk about that, will we? Um, but, uh, anyways, it's, um, but what they we then then they what they would do is they would um, use a generator for a while. They couldn't get power off the, the DCR, and they'd run a generator. Yep. Yeah. But Bob, you know, Doc Schmidt was literally the that last touch, and he's still involved. You know. Mm -hmm. In in, uh, in the retired kind of position, and uh, you know, uh, the DCR has been very gracious with the you know pl providing electricity yeah. and whatever. So um, we'll probably go up again before Christmas. But make, um, make sure that... like I said, it's uh, so you have to change bulbs and stuff. They probably go out and well, and they go. What, what, what's happened? We we've gone to those LED bulbs. Okay. And these bulbs you see are the one I the last two years They're I've got. Pretty bright. Well, the problem is they get water. The water we found where the water is seeping around, so we've had a silicone around. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to look for more, uh, more Weather robust resistant. bulb. Yeah. An LED that's bright. But what we want to do is we need to replace all nine lines. Okay. And we have a redesign. Yep. Where um, it will be like I say, it'll be more efficient and yep. and and like I say, these LED bulbs versus the old incandescent oh. are just, uh, like negligible right. power. Right. Right. You know, and for thirty days. It's nothing. It's, it's and it nothing. brings so much joy to people. It does. Yeah. So that's what we're, sure. we're trying to do. But I appreciate it, David. That's great. And uh, we're just trying to keep something that's going that's been yeah. going for the last. Uh, it makes years. a big impact. Yeah, it does. It does. Deerfield. People, it does. people are so happy to see. It. I mean, Deerfield now. There's a constant comments about it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's just you know, a number of people are just you know. And it's so nice. I I the other night I had to come through from a meeting. I had to 
nice to see Lloyd from the Commons as well. Yeah, and, looking and it great. Was coming from the south. So the but we were we were the other night. We were praying because it got you know it got oh. foggy. And I'm like, yeah, I couldn't see it from my house. And I'm like, and then it finally cleared. And if I can see it, and then like I say, yeah, both of us went up on Sunday. So yeah, it uh, it keeps shining bright. So, yeah. Good. Uh, Thank you. We'll Thank you very on. much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay. All right. Thank you. you too. I will call you. Hey, um, select board reports. Um, I just want to say I had a wonderful conversation with a Mark Benjamin that has a Polish heritage book for us um, for the 350th um, that we can look at and. Um, John, I did talk to Jonathan, so I'm going to get a, the phone number so that he can maybe do an interview because he has such an interesting story about how the um, Catholic Church, uh, you know, the two churches split here in 1929 and family history. But um, and I'm not really sure if he was pulling my name, my leg or not. He said he wasn't, but he, his name, he got his name because it was a question mark. He was not named initially and then they dropped the question so <laughs> well it was an ethnic reason that it split oh well i'm not i'm not gonna let him tell the story well, it was. first there was irish church and the polish church well anyway that's why it split it was very interesting and so i just want to remind people that who have all these wonderful stories we really want to make sure we capture them for the 350th and that um, people are able to hear them. So we, we will be contacting you, but pre please reach out if you have interesting stories like Mark Benjamin does. Because I think it's very, just a wonderful part of our town. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I just wanted to kind of speak a little bit about. Oh, uh, one more thing. I forgot. Sue, right. Sue Antonellis told me yeah. that very successful toy and food drive. She brought carloads up. And, um, and probably because of the weather, the pictures with Santa are going to be on Sunday. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to cut no, you no. off. Oh, no, no. That's good. But that's everybody's I was like, oh, my God, I almost yeah. forgot. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the training that I took last night, the sen not called sensitivity training. Respectful can, workplace Respectful workplace training. training. And um, I found it pretty interesting and, and really good. Um, and I felt like it's something that needs to continue a bit. Two hours went by pretty fast and couldn't really get into a lot more. I just felt like we could do more and um, and branch out in other areas. So I, I, I like the idea of it, I'd like to kind of continue that and work on that a little bit more. Um, and, and maybe more, for not, you know, all mandatory because people, obviously you have, it's a lot to bring everybody in and all your employees and all your board members. But I think there, there are areas where we could kind of continue on with that. I, I think that's something that we should, could, look for in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. They have that, yeah. number one, they have all the vendors there. Yep. But also we could talk to the state people and see if there's any um, you know, like grants. Grants or whatever, yep. because I think it would be I think it's in number one, I think it's a little bit intimidating to have everybody in a big room. Yeah. It's hard for people that are less um, you know, don't want to speak up maybe right. as easily. Um, so I think having smaller breakout sessions. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and and having them all every year mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense because then that we can we can all stay current. Right. But we could have some kind of. You training. get a little bit more in depth in certain topics than yes. you know instead of this was yes. it was good because it was a good broad brush on a lot of things right. but I, I think know. that we could do we can do better. At, you know, digging into some of these issues that we have to address. I, I, I and think so work too. With, so. And I, I, but like having smaller groups. And, yeah, it's more uh, more convenient for people, comfortable. I, I, yeah, would make it more comfortable for people that they could give personal um, yeah. perspective or mm -hmm. have actually training. Sometimes when you participate in a training module kind of thing, you are able to understand it better. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that that is a little. Yeah. Um, an issue came up during the last session that um, um, board members were emailed. Mm -hmm. Kai, we can't hear you. Could you go up to the mic? Sorry, yes. David, I, I yeah. State David your name, David. I was talking just... about using your personal email. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Board members. And I, I was told, I think it was a, 
giving out town emails is a cost factor and maybe we uh, should uh it is a big cost factor yeah uh, and so I, I i didn't say anything because it's not budgeted right but i think maybe that's something we should be looking for what was your comment well it just i mean it did strike home that even she didn't want to answer really she said that's that's kind of a legal tough one but um your personal computers become yes you know susceptible, susceptible discoverable. to absolutely yeah and, if there's an and issue i don't really relish the idea of having everything on my computer right looked at because something was suspicious yeah me. because it, it, in a volunteer capacity you serve Maybe it's a maybe somebody serves a half hour, an hour, a, a month, or something like that, and then all yeah. of a sudden, all of their personal data is, you know, discoverable. Yeah, if there's an issue, well, so it, maybe it is. It is not a hundred percent discoverable. I mean, there's as some it relates clarity. to you, you just have to. I mean, you have somebody that would go through it mm -hmm. to pull out anything that's related to whatever the position yeah. was mm -hmm. you're filling, but. It's still invasive. Yeah, and it I is. I think you know yeah. the town has to realize that it is costly. So it's we'll just as a volunteer that. town, that's a huge expense to take on. Yeah, and it's huge because people I, come on into the board and go off board. I mean, it's one thing if you do it for like twenty years, or right. whatever. I don't. But I guess I didn't see why it would be so expensive. Mm. I don't know. I was just told it was a cost thing. It costs per email. Literally, it costs somewhere in the neighborhood of two to twelve dollars per email. Yes, Whoa. I'm not kidding. And so oh, Lily really? would chime in right not, now and say, "We have per a free email place. that you send, no. but per email account." Oh. Yes, the account itself <laughs> and the accessibility. No, yes, a good clarification. No. Yes. Well, so I just want to bring that. I'm not here. For yeah. That. Not no. Here. No. Absolutely. No, so it's thanks really, for your comment. It's good that you brought it up. Yeah. I, I like I said, we were doing it together. So mm -hmm. I, it just. I, I knew it was costly, mm -hmm. but it it's also, costly. but it's also administratively, I mean, you can hardly keep up current on who's on what boards and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's so you have to get an email every time someone comes on a board. And so there's one other thing that I would say is uh, I noticed several people and the chair of the finance committee is one of them have changed their email using either free services with a specific focus on just those email, mm -hmm. just just for that, like a Gmail account. Yeah, I have multiple Gmail accounts as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one way to do it. Yeah. The issue is backing up those emails. And so one of the expenses that's related to having mm -hmm. an email like that is the monitoring of the email and the protection of the email from sp spam and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you do pay part of that cost is an IT cost and then backup of those emails. So it's it's but not it, that, it's not like it should not happening now right <laughs> well right, exactly. I would, one thing i would consider doing and that's what this person did was shift that email and focus everything that right. way so that there wasn't other email that was involved but i we i've heard this come up more than once and so it is something we can present it's just a question of how much it would cost the town given an estimate of what the number of people yeah on the committees what we could expect because you buy them in in chunks of emails like 10 or 20 oh. or whatever and so when you run out of emails which we just did a couple months ago we have to buy another chunk i see so it's not as easy as it's yeah no it's uh, no but sorry I, I, never I think is. I see where I'm headed yeah <laughs> right yeah. right uh, thank you david thank you david. but we can ask that question david see whether we can find out what the cost would be for a chunk. So uh, the last thing I was just uh, sewer a little bit. So um, that's great. I talked with um, David this week, with Casey, and um, David can do. It. We're gonna do. Uh, oh, you can't. Great. So we're gonna do. I wanted to say it was the fifth. It's yeah. the fifth. Fifth of January. A um, a um, working group, kind of just to talk about where we're at on the projects, and you know, kind of setting. A, roadmap for going forward kind of like we did before when we started the whole thing just to kind of where were, where are we where were we where are we going um because i think on the fifth we have um our wastewater you know our monthly meeting at the plant and then we thought we could come back here and just do a quick thing okay do and we have uh, time? 
I think two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. And then um, we could, uh, and then once we kind of put something together, we could he could present at a select board meeting, you know. So we just have a working group meeting, and then and then have more of a select board presentation later on okay. in the month. That's so. Um, yeah, but the uh, project's going well. Um, you'll see later on we're signing the, some contracts. We're, yeah, we're signing one, one contract. And get, get Matt Ball rolling for phase two that we approved last week. So, yeah. Board um, of Health? Um, well, Alex is here tonight. Great. Um, oh, this, the, what's happening with, I think one of the things we wanted to talk about was thinking about an advisory um, based, you know, face mask mandate, not not a mandate to wear masks, but an advisory. So we encourage people to do it. Um, you know, when you can't socially distance or you're sitting too close to somebody or whatever. Um, we know Alex has um, been following everything. And the, the thing is right now they're about 14 or 16 people in Massachusetts as of yesterday. Um, 10 females, six males from young children to 60s, uh, five were fully vaccinated, and including one booster dose that uh, in Essex, Middlesex, and, uh, Suffolk, and Worcester. Nobody was hospitalized. Um, so it is, it is much, it, it, see, it appears to be milder, but it is so much more transmissible. So I think, you know, my thoughts are that we're gonna be living with COVID for a long time. We got to get used to it, and um, you know we'll we'll just we're gonna try to get boosters. We'll run some clinics. We had the second shot clinics for the pediatrics. Um, we had a little bit of a snafu in Deerfield on the eighth. Um, the Vax bus came with only four vaccinators instead of six, and they had um, co condensed our uh, clinic hours by an hour. So we had four hours instead of five. When they had four vaccinators, and as a result, we had people waiting in the hallways, which is Not what, what we're trying to do. avoid. Right, and we don't have much control over it. That's and so, frustrating um, immensely. Uh, you know, so how are we moving forward? How are we going to set up clinics in a way that um, is accessible and we have availability to our community? So, whether we have boosters in six months again or annual shot that they're gonna combine. Hopefully they'll come up with some technology and combine it with the flu shot, which is what they did with the H1N1. H1N1 has been part of the flu vaccine since, you know, I think 2011 or 12. And so whether they can come up with some combination like that, or we're gonna have two separate shots, we're gonna figure out a way that we're gonna have it accessible here in our community. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And we have a really robust group of volunteers they've been trained on the color platform and we'll figure it out in the meantime just we need to talk about this advisory mass advisory mm -hmm. um i think it's we're not to the point of the mass mandate because the problem mm -hmm. with the mass mandate is we spend all our time and alex's time running around you know we're reported violations mm -hmm. and and there's not much you can do. One of the biggest problems is you get people coming off 91 going to like Yankee Candle. And, and your out-of-state people are not used to our strict, more strict stuff. And that's what we ran in last, into last time. They're constantly running over there. And I have to tell you, it is a little bit scary, you know, confronting these people. And, and I don't- Or unruly and, right now. Right, and I, and, and for, a lower wage person to stand there and have a mask and then be confronted by some of these people it, it, it's not pleasant mm -hmm. and it's scary so that's why i think i'm just talking about advisory we, we, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do about those people maybe but you yourself can protect yourself well, and your family by wearing a mask when you go into stores and you know in situations like david is right now wearing a mask I, I, there's most of us here are spread out enough and there's enough air circulation so I don't think we're at risk but you know the other night when we had our training there was too many people in this room not to wear masks 
So, um, so that's the kind of thing we need to do. It's, it's just good judgment. And we can also speak to fact. You know, I mean, we, we talked that, you know, that some people are just ignoring this. Well, I, I think just com constantly giving facts that 29,000 people just died that didn't need to. They, they were unvaccinated and they died from COVID. 29,000 people. We have 5,000 in Deerfield. Just imagine how many people that is are dying constantly because they're not vaccinated and they need to get vaccinated. Um, it, more people died in 2021 since we've had the vaccines than have died in 2020 when we didn't have a vaccine. Over and it's because pe we're over 800,000 and it's just oh, ignorance sorry. of not taking a vaccine and saving yourself and you know and and for me i'm i i don't i don't see the need right now the numbers aren't in in our area to to have a mass mandate and i i, I just don't see it yet so if we become to that you know and i think that we, what we have to start looking at is not just number of cases number of hospitalizations and hospitalizations of people that have been vaccinated you know, I mean, there's been plenty of notice to people to get a vaccine. If you don't want to get it and you you get sick and you're in the hospital, you know, you've been warned. It's the people that I'm worried about that are younger children that haven't had the ability to get vaccinated or um, or the ones that are susceptible to illness, even if they are vaccinated. But those are the ones that I'm concerned with. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I know we're not going to we're not going to change a ton of minds at this point, but I think you just still need to talk about the facts of the people that are dying. There's constantly people that said they, you know, they downplayed it forever. And guess what? We really, you know, I saw a post on Facebook. I didn't know the person, but in, in one of my groups, you know, people that I know, friend of a friend or something that said they downplayed it from the beginning and they just, their whole family has been in the ER and, and just, and now they're, they realize this is nothing to mess with. So just please get a vaccine. I know there's a waiting list at CVS, but mm -hmm. you can make a, a you can make a an appointment at both Walgreens and CVS. And I know we don't have any more pediatric um, availability in our pharmacies and stuff. They're just not doing young kids, well, so they have to, you have to go down down to like Holyoke or whatever. But that's the one thing that drives me crazy about all of this is that you had people standing in line for a vaccine here it is how many months later after we've gotten one we've done you've done a fantastic job doing these fax bus things but why do we still in this day and age this long into this it's so few and far between if there's that much demand why are they not doing it until nobody's coming to the door it makes no sense to me I know. but you just need support right support to handle it needs to be entered into the MI, yep. MIIS system, and we need somebody to administer it. And that's that's what we we'll need to focus on. Yes, yeah. so I'm I'm tired of waiting on others to make sure that that gets done. I know. And you know, it's, local businesses have the option of refusing service mm -hmm. to people that are not wearing masks. They do. Um, none of the local businesses I know of are requiring vax cards, but um, I went to Champney Sunday for lunch with my daughter, mm -hmm. who's down from Maine, and they require people to wear masks coming in. Yep. And, you know, if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't get service. Right. Very cut and dry. Yep. Um, and, you know, we're not going to prohibit local businesses from putting those restrictions on. Right. Because they're just looking out for the well-being of the people that are working there yep. and their patrons. Yeah. So, um, so um, what you know, it's it's not a very polite way to put it, but you know, the way I look at it, it's very hard to fix stupid. Mm -hmm. Well, we're we're going to try to get the Vax buses out here uh, Thank you. again for the elementary schools um, yeah. in January. So that people can see that how successful, um, the, and and with no, as far as I know, no um, side effects or anything. Everybody right. was was uh, vaccinated successfully and had great no, service. No, no issues and um, and are safe for the holidays. Yeah. So 
do you, do you want to talk a little bit about you know the directive that came from the state about not doing contact tracing? Well, I'm not sure I, that's a, a great I, idea. No, it isn't. And the reason why is, and Alex, please speak up because you have been key on this. We, um, who's that? You know, we. My granddaughter. Oh, just we, a baby. We we take the information that comes in Maven, and you know, I look at who is sick, and um, and I was just meeting with Jennifer Hoffman up in Greenfield. They run a whole statistical data and analyze every all their cases for the whole week. I kind of do that, mm -hmm. um, and I try to trace back where did they come, who got it from who, where did it come from, is it isolated, do we have community spread, is it indication of community spread. Yeah. And you know we've been very, very successful in, in contact tracing, and now with the test and stay at the element, you know, at our schools to keep mm -hmm. the schools safe. And, um, but the tracing is 100% uh, how you contain it. And the fact that we trace it very fast and that we are trying to analyze the data. Um, Jennifer has analysis sheet that they do with their statistics. And I was just talking to Alex about it today, this afternoon. And so we're going to try to set up the same thing with our statistics. And it gives you, and, and, and what it does is it, it gives you a spreadsheet. So even though you don't, you're not 100% aware of everything. It can it see the you see the correlation that you might have missed that as a you know somebody that knows the community. Mm -hmm. And um, so I feel like it's a really exciting thing. Um, you know, we looked at some different forms, and I, I really like what Greenfield does. And so we're going to set it up the same way um, so that we get real analysis instead of just sort of my. This is how I feel that there is no community spread. You know, I, I mm -hmm. notify You're on you all of them. Yeah. If, if I feel like there's anything yeah. happening or, mm -hmm. or it's not good news. But, um, you know, I, I feel like at this point we have a steady, low level spread, and we have to make people aware that you have to be more vigilant. You can't let it slip. And you, you know, because it, I, based on what happened in Delta, we, we, it was like six to eight weeks. Delta became the major variant, you know, like 95% of the cases. Mm -hmm. and, and so I had said, when we first were hearing about this, I said, oh my gosh, we're in, by January, the end of January, we're gonna, it's gonna be, put, this new one is gonna push out Delta. But right. the problem that I'm concerned about is we'll have flu circulating, which we didn't last year. Right. We have flu circulating, we have a few cases, we're, we're Probably we only had one case last year, right. so we got five or six. Well, it's four hundred percent increase, mm -hmm. but so it's not really that bad when you say four or five hundred percent. But the fact that we have flu circulating, and when I was on my Homeland Security um, subcommittee, we had an update um, on Tuesday, and and it's definitely people are hospitalized. People, yep. you know, it is in the, it is in the valley. So we're going to have flu, we're going to have Delta, and then we're going to have this Omicron. And it, it's just, we, we've got to pay attention because mm -hmm. uh, the combination is really going to be tough for people. So wearing a mask when you're out in public and in, in not airy kind mm -hmm. of situations, I think is very critical. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying we should have a mask advisory. Um, do you want, uh, Alex, what would you like to say on this? Oh, Alex, I'm sorry. This is Alex White, our health agent. Hi. Right. How First meeting. Welcome. <laughs> we see you all the time, but the public does it. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm fairly new. I just uh, began um, this morning for us as a health agent. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a lot of work, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really rewarding. And, you know, my role is, you know, Um, but I think you, you got it absolutely, you know, updating COVID-19 prevention strategies um, as, as it emerges and as it, things change and evolve. You know, um, you know, we had a high vaccination rate, you know, a certain period of time, and then, you know, we had low community spread. And so then we, you know, 
minister to evaluate you know, whether or not parents are necessarily need, needed at that time with those variables. So, however, we're seeing um, an increase in COVID-19 cases. Uh, we're, we're seeing the community spread, if you will. Um, and so it's just like another added layer uh, for public health with you know, doing um, assessment for policy development for insurance uh, purposes. So yeah, I, I think that it, it's a really good idea to have uh, an advisory to this LA to just bring about the, 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 the educational awareness No. So um, well, I think we need to vote if we're going to have an advisory. So do we have any language yet? On um, advisory? Well, this is the um, advisory that was updated um, as of July 30th, 2021. Um, so I don't know if Casey wants to post this or, or whatever, but that's the state language. Um, yeah. And it just recommends that you wear a mask. Yeah. You know, we can Four recommend seven. it, but I don't think we have to vote on it. Well, if we want a formal policy, I would have council review something yeah. because we don't want to put ourselves in a situation okay. where we might not have thought through some of some of the things that aren't really on our radar screens. That's that would well, be my only concern. I, I guess I just want to stress to people that it's an advisory, but it, hopefully people will take the initiative to protect themselves. And that we uh, we do not feel at this time that the, a mask mandate is really recommended necessary necessary only because it you spend so much time in enforcement and really what we want is people to be smart gather smart we know the holidays coming we had a huge surge after Thanksgiving we have this new variant coming so just be smart about. Um, you know, get getting together at Christmas. There are home PCR tests that you can take. Alex um, has uh, located us a way to get 400 Binex tests, so we're gonna get that sorted out and um, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well. On a little bit brighter note, at 510 this evening, I yes. became a grandfather again with a little granddaughter. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very nice. That is really, really good news. It's adorable. That's really good. Luna Love. Luna Love. What's her name? Her name? Luna Love. Oh. A rock star. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I can hear her like a music. Her mother would say, music. displaced hippie. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. That's really yeah. good news. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best times ever. Don't know how the puppy's going to take to it. But. Right. <laughs> so. That's a good Slickman's announcement. Mm. I like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. We don't have any minutes to nope. review. So the next thing is the uh, discussion items. Energy Resource Committee request. Thank you, Alex. David? They can't hear you unless you're in mic. Yep. Come to the mic. Hi, you're up again, David. Did we start? Um, David Gilbert Keith with the Energy Committee. I'm hoping this is somewhat vague. Uh, we, of course, are interested in creating bike lanes, and I know that funding is an issue. Um, we have worked with FERCOG, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, um, as for technical assistance on our Green Communities Grant. And I'm hoping that we could approach them to get, an, uh, they would get a MITA type grant of municipal technical assistance to help with creating bike lanes and, and perhaps seeking grants for doing a bike lane. Um, I haven't talked with them directly about this. I think um, one of our members, Greg, has. 
but I don't really know what's involved, but I know that they can't go ahead without your support. Well, generally, we get a list from FERCOG. I don't think we've seen that yet this year, have we? Uh, it's coming out in the next week or two. And then we go through DLT the list of what they yeah. can offer, and then we decide what's five, six, seven, eight, nine, or whatever, three, three. two, one. <laughs> three, two, one. Uh, you know, for opportunities for, you know, so we'll certainly entertain looking at that and see, yeah. you know, what they have. That, I, I would just like to say, as, as the CCI group is trying, I mean, the bike lanes is part of what we want to happen yeah. in the connectivity from, mm -hmm. you know, across town here. Um, we, that's going to be part of the design requirement. We don't have any funding for hiring someone to do it. So obviously, if we can get help and get it done and then get a grant, that would be fabulous. But that is our intention to put bike lanes, you know, on North right. Main Street right. at a minimum. Um, Greg, did you want to? Oh, and then yeah. I was just going to say. I think you, you have to come to the mic. mic. Yeah, or else they won't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm going to Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David, for that. I, I want you to know we do support it. Greg is the person who actually has been inspiring our interest in bike lanes. But I was just going to say there's there are bike lanes that just need line painting. There are bike lanes where it would be great if the elementary school were more accessible um, because, uh, you know, this. The, it's, it's hard for kids to ride their bikes to school because that road is so skinny at the beginning and it's hard. And I mean, so there, there are all levels of potential <laughs> bike lanes, but connecting um, North Main and the Pleasant. library and, you know, mm -hmm. anyhow, sort of that whole thing would be really fabulous for um, to just do a lot better job. And there's, you, there's lots of levels, so we can start with the cheaper ones if we don't have money, but then go and but if we have a plan for for all of it, then that would be great. Thank you. Bye. Just want to add my voice to the chorus um, and to um, say what um, what my understanding has been. Um, two years ago, I spoke with Kevin Scarborough about this before um, I really started to think about what would be involved and, you know, the complicated elements within um, the plan that I presented to you uh, about a year ago. And um, he said, basically, as far as the striping part of it, that all he needed me to do was get you guys to tell him where you wanted to put the stripes, and he had the paint, and he could do it. And I'm sure that it's more complicated than that, but in terms of what I presented last year, it was a phase one, phase two, as MA was referring to. And um, the first phase was just addressing the safety issue, which it is a safety issue. My kid almost got hit. I got almost hit on, a, on the crosswalk in the center of town. People are driving really fast and Nothing would change the speed of traffic faster than narrowing the delineated road where the cars are and saying to the public, whether they are Deerfield residents or people from other communities, this is the road, this is the bike lane, this is the sidewalk. And whether we do it with grass strips down the road which would be really lovely and would change the, I mean, it would make the whole town look much more beautiful. I think that it's, it's an accident of fate that we've ended up with a huge boulevard in the center of South Deerfield. I think it was probably because the churches didn't have places for park, enough room for parking, and a lot of people were going to church. Now both the churches are closed, so there's no longer a need for that kind of, you know, Asphalt C on North Main Street. Um, I'm just wanting to ask if we can move forward with striping North Main Street this spring. Last year when I proposed this whole thing, I was under the impression when I left the meeting that it was gonna happen over the summer. And I know that you know it's 
there are design issues and that there should be you know very clearly defined long-term plan of what we want to try to do but this is just a small piece of a larger vision which would connect us to other communities and which would encourage people to really use bicycles as a primary you know not primary but as a means of transportation for some people for primary means of transportation to make it safe i went for a bike ride the other day on north main street and the road is clean but the area where people walk and bicycle is not there are branches and twigs and it's much less safe to ride a bike in what would be a bike lane or in the emergency lane that it is to ride on the street in terms of just the way that it's treated. It needs to be swept, obviously, and striped. It doesn't really seem like that much to ask that we stripe it. It will immediately say to everybody that goes through, there's not, you know, this whole road is not yours to drive on, just this part. And it honors the people that do take bicycling seriously. and. There are several people in town who ride to and from work on our roads and it's saying to them that they have a space to safely ride and i don't see any reason why we should be putting this off for another study or um you know more a lot more detail we can certainly resolve the design issue as far as north main street is concerned it's just choosing whether you want this stencil a bicycle or that stencil and having somebody stencil it and mark the lines well it is a little bit more complicated than that but i i think one of the things that we intend to do as a select board is we have arpa money that we were going to use to for on the leary lot and try to develop that leary lot and it was going to go we were going to hire a design firm and that was partly out to do go into the common because the problem is the common is you know state owned on on all more they own more property than we thought and it's the only part we really own is by Cheslick's market there on that side and so I'm hoping because of our CCI we will prioritize the bike pass and I'm hoping that um, Trevor and Dave agree that we will have some kind of concept over right you know overall concept going up to the park that would include bike lanes mm -hmm. as well as you know improvement of our sidewalks that will give us enough of a picture of how we move forward because we do have to figure out where the bike lanes go and it, it is more complicated and it is also when you were talking about cleaning the bike lanes you know that's one more thing for Kevin to do but we feel that that it is important, right? I we have heard you, and I agree with you 100. percent And we are just very thankful that no one has gotten hurt so far. And um, and I think we all want to address the safety issue for sure. I, I don't know how other people feel, but I, we've always been on the same page on this. Can I just respond to what you said? Yeah. Because in the way that I proposed it last year. I anticipated that, you know, because I'm on the town common committee and I understand the complications of trying to get bike lanes around the common, things have changed, the bump out appeared over by Leo's table, so the plan that I had presented in that kind of detail would, would need to be modified. But as far as the section from the Leary lot to the schools, that I was, is what I was suggesting that we strike completely ignore the center of town for now. Probably if there is a bike line that goes through the center of town, at least one section of it's gonna to have to go around town because they can't, there can't be one now because of the bump out by Leo's that goes right into town. So I, I would ask that, you know, we take Kevin up on his offer of paint and just do the section from the, where the Leary lot begins down to where the high school is. And it's not, you know, going to be, un there would be no reason to undo it ever. The only thing that would need to change is if we were at some point to get a grant to be able to put in a grass strip, we could add a grass strip, but this would just be a map for the grass strip in essence. But in the meantime, it would make it safer and it would um, slow down the traffic. 
overnight. I mean, it wouldn't take, we could have it in a couple of months. Thank you for your comment. Okay, uh, you know, we'll talk to Kevin about it. Uh, you know, I want, I know one of the areas of concern was actually Bloody Brook Corner. Yeah, I mean. And how, how to get the bike path around there because that's the one narrow range and how to divert the bike traffic around that safely. I'm sorry, which Thank corner? Uh, Bloody Brook Corner. You, you can't have the bike path just go up and then end abruptly. And so that was one thing that we were, is a complication that we're trying to work out. Um, and, you know, we have to put a sidewalk in. From a safety point of view, we need to put a sidewalk in from Frontier to the new park. So that will, would be part of, you know, how we handle that. You know, I don't, think it's, that I don't think it's accurate to say that bike lanes can't end. They do all over the place. They put them, they, they exist where they can exist. And, you know, they grow. I mean, eventually this bike lane would become part of the network of bike lanes all over the valley. I'm hoping, I mean, it, it, in Northampton, they started with one bike lane between Northampton and Florence. Now it connects to East Hampton, I think even South Hampton. It's evolved into this wonderful thing that everybody in that community can, is benefiting from. It's a delight to use those, those paths because you feel so much safer as a bicyclist. And you are safer. Statistically, you're way safer. I mean, we're, we're moving forward on it, right? I mean, that is in our desire to make it happen. Well, is there anything that our committee can do to help? Well, you can pursue seeing if there's any funding. Um, because we, want, we do want a, a really nice bike path, not we don't need to have the grass strip necessarily, but we want a, a bike path that is just more than the length right here. You know, we want, we do want one throughout all our streets, South Main Street. And there's a lot of kids that come up from South Main Street to go to the elementary school. It'd be lovely to have a bike path that was on the other side of the intersection. I meant with just the first part, with North Main. Um, is there anything that we could do to move that along? Well, when the weather gets good, hopefully we'll have had our design engineer work up something that can give Kevin the guidance. You know, I, you can't, it doesn't, not, painting right now is not, and you know, the weather is not good. Uh, of course, it so, wouldn't be able to happen until the spring, I mean, no, no matter what, I just meant in terms of preparing for it to happen this year. Well, like I said, if we find funding, that will certainly help the design process. But I, I feel like it has to be part of a design process that we have some guidance from somebody that's looking over. I, I don't want to send Kevin out there just to draw a line. It needs to be, you know, so it needs to be part of the big picture. And, okay. and we are moving forward with the Leary lot. So, and the timeline is the spring. So, I, I would say that it lines up with the weather. I mean, it's, it is our intention to move forward on it. Or it's my intention, anyway. Yep. Okay. Because I, I agree it's a safe issue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, next thing on there is the opiate, opiate settlement participation forms. Jennifer just got back from. Oh, I can't. Oh, I see a thumbs up. I don't see a hand. I don't see a hand up. No hands up. Does Jennifer, can you ask what? Reed if he can unmute? Oh, Reed, can you unmute? Does he have a comment? No, she just got a thumbs up. Nobody's got anything up. No. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, I, I didn't uh, raise my hand. Okay, thank you. Okay, Reed. Reed, we just didn't want to miss your comment. Okay, opioids. Opioids. So I mentioned this at the last meeting as a mail item. Mm -hmm. The state has contacted many of the towns 
to request that they consider signing on to mm -hmm. the settlement. It, the settlement that's been offered from there's two actual there's two settlement documents, but the settlements have been that have been offered in relation to the opioid um, litigation that was recently, I think, finalized. Um, and we have a hard deadline of getting this to the state before the end of the month. So we had agreed to talk about it again. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't settle, um, you know, sign and, and get on. You know, I, I think if you were a community, maybe like Springfield or something like that, and you felt like you wanted to get you may have more money needs. out of this, yes. more needs, we're, you know, well, we do have issues in town and I think we could benefit from this. I don't think we're holding out to, to hire a lawyer and no, no, sue no, on this, our own account. So no, I think and so the makes recommendation sense to move forward. That I did speak to a Jillian Finer, um, and you have her, I think you have her email in there, but mm -hmm. the es essentially by signing on, we work with other communities in the Commonwealth to guarantee that the Commonwealth proceeds as a whole mm -hmm. because it will change what the settlement numbers are. It really won't yep. change terribly much for us it's going to be smaller for us we're a small community right. but a lot of these other larger communities that may have larger problems this could benefit everyone and it'll benefit us because it's it, reach it's a regional right. problem it's a regional anyways. problem yeah. here anyway are, are they asking for um i mean we did have truly have costs of not paying and, and sure. we may be able depending on what so, the settlement is they don't give us a number and i think okay. yeah they give us a percentage they depending a percent. on the town and it's fairly small but i think I think yes, we would put that towards I mean, Narcan stocking. I would stocking. want us to at least send a follow up that we did have, we did incur actual costs. Mm -hmm. We did incur Narcan. I mean, we can find out how much it was, but and we've lost I residents. Know, and we've lost oh, residents yeah. for sure. But I'm 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 talking about us as a town. We yes, right. We did have their money mm -hmm. to buy Narcan. Right? Yeah, and, and we could do we prevention programs. You know, we should, if they want documentation, we can document something like that. I'm yeah. sure I can get that. At okay. this point, they want the board to approve signing yep. on and have a member, and I would assume it would be the so, chair. And there's two settlements. There's two settlements. There's the J&J &J settlement, and, and the then distributor. there's the, it's three, it's, um, well, oh, now I can't remember all three of them. It's three companies. Yeah, it was, um, uh, yeah, I'll that. It's on the tip that. of my tongue. It was. Um, um, I, I would make a motion that we. Um, Cardinal um, McKesson and Amerisource Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would, I, would, I would make a motion that we um, sign off. I'll second that motion. Both, I'll make a motion to sign both. Right. Or have Dave sign for yep. us. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, David. Thank okay. you. Great. Aaron? You want yeah, to sign and it, and we can fill out the rest of it. David sign. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. So next thing on our agenda is the uh, sewer commitment. Number so, one for approval. Yep, this is our, um, our summer um, usage. So this this is the one that we do the uh, abatements for residents that um, residents pay no more than 125% of their previous winter billing. So we have an abatement total all in to all the listed names on this giant list here of uh, $64,979.73. Uh, the select board here authorizes the abatement of the above sewer accounts for single family owner occupied properties above 125 percent of their own winter consumption for the fy22 commitment number one totaling sixty four thousand nine hundred seventy nine dollars and seventy three cents make a motion to approve that um i will second that any further discussion no. hearing none all those in favor Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried. And then I'll leave this for your signature. And, and then I will also, um, so this is a, a memo to the treasurer collector for the utility building, billing of uh, 2021 commitment, 2022 commitment one. You are hereby authorized to collect from the 953 bills named on the commitment 
with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of 776,890 and 96 uh, cents uh, dollars to, uh, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So this would be um, the sewer, the service, which is 95,300 and the sewer um, use was $672,590.96 for a total of $776,000. $890.96. The sewer consumption for this period of time is 40,679,536 gallons. I will um, make that motion for approving. I'll make the motion. Approve. I'll second the motion. All goes in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Thank you very much. that Here's these two items <clears throat> next thing on our agenda is the uh, DPC contract for design services this is the contract we approved last uh, last week and uh, we just have it for signature tonight or last meeting it was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the, um, uh, let's see, do you, and we're, that's the engineering. This is the engineering one that we're signing and yes. then the other one we're waiting on because our attorney's on. looking at a couple things. I did yes. talk to David about that. Um, yeah. what, what our attorney's looking at before we sign the other engineering contract, Carolyn, is the, um, because we're in an environment of COVID and long lead times for stuff, it's, it's, they're looking into putting in some language that, you know, we we're tasked with spending all the money in th 36 months and, and we just, you know, with lead times of things right now, we just don't want to left hold in the bag. USDA was a lot more forgiving on how long projects went. And then before COVID, they kind of ratcheted down on how long towns could um, be awarded a loan, you know, or a program, but then take forever to fund it. We've already funded it. So they're not really worried, about, I think, about us. They just, you know, we just want to make sure that there's something in there to protect us for long lead times on materials because it's uh, really tough. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll have that to sign next uh, next chance. Okay. Or, or okay. we could make a motion to have David sign it when At it's in. Once council Yeah, so I'll make it. a motion to um, have uh, our chair sign the um, application of USDA for DPC. I will second that. Um, I appreciate you trying to make that, um, you know, adjustment. Yep. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor. I, Daniel. Street light mm. uh, contract. contract. Is that is that changed? It has. That's that's. So there's a question about language on that, but I don't expect an issue. I could. There's a something that wasn't filled in, and I noticed it this afternoon. Did we approve this last time? We did? No, you no, didn't. This is different. So we just this read is it. New. You, okay. This is new, and what this is is it's the installation agreement with the engineer with the company that would do the. The installation. So it's it's the same as what we are already yes. we're thinking of agreeing to. And yes, we didn't no have changes. a dollar amount on this, well, correct? There it was is. per there's, it was like there's per a fixture light. that's missing. There's it's seventy dollars per something, per and then there's a fixture price that's missing. That's what I found this afternoon. And I talked to George about it. And he was gonna get me some information. And that's about the time that I realized I wasn't getting all my email. So he was on a plane for quite a while. Oh. I haven't been able to circle back around to him. Um so are we waiting on so, this? Or? No, we can't I'm, I'm wait on this. I'm just a little this, concerned not having a fixture. 
There's a fixture price for, for Cobra fixtures. There's a separate price for other fixtures. The post top fixtures has a different price. And so I was looking in my emails and can't find that. Oh, okay. So pending additional information, if the board would approve. Because we need to sign it. We have, yeah, we need to get this out. So I'm hoping George can get back to me tomorrow. Um, what I was going to suggest that the board um, consider approving it and signing at their convenience um, once we get that number i should be able to get that one morning he knows i'm waiting for that'd it. be great so i make a motion to the contract and then we'll come in and sign once it's um once that second did second item number yeah is it's a second yeah, item number there. on there that way we're, we're no before it fails <laughs> pardon hi hello yes that's their contract yeah. oh oh reed has some a comment reed has his hand up yeah. Oh, thank you, Reed, for making us aware. Okay. Um, yeah, I talked to George a couple of hours ago, and he's going to be in Turner's uh, tomorrow, and he said he could come by if uh, useful. So, would that be useful to you, Casey? I didn't hear what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's talking in the background. <laughs> not, not here. That's us, because we have closed captioning and ca enabled. <laughs> um, so, Reed, what was the comment? Oh, I, I talked to George uh, a couple hours ago, and he said he's going to be in Turner's tomorrow, and he could stop by if it would be useful. And I was going to ask KC if that would be useful. Uh, we'll I can do that. I just have to have to give the call back, Reed. Thank you. Yep. I so I think so. Yes. Good. All right. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I don't I hear Casey yeah. coming and sign. So I would I would recommend that the motion include that we sign this thing. Mm -hmm. And I was just worried if have an open ended price. But right. As long as it's in there. we know it's there. It's just we got to fill in okay, that blank. No, that's fine. Because I just that's noticed. It. Okay. I just didn't want to sign a contract with no right price. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Just reminding you that we are within hours of having this not make it by the 31st. So uh, they said that it would take, you know, close to 15 days to do the installation. And that's where we are right now. So we want to sign it. Good. Thank you. Is he planning to start tomorrow? Is that the idea? No, Is we're George planning on having installer? a team meeting about it as soon as they can. I just have to electronically get that back to Arden. So yeah, we actually were, were roll, trying to get this done, get at least the project meeting started. We've already worked out the detail schedule with the police department. And so these are some of the background things that George and I have been working on for the past few days. Does it have to be completed by the 31st, the whole job, like lights in and everything? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that Eversource has offered a big incentive of paying for a lot of it. and. They're, they're putting the deadline of the 31st side. So we stand to lose Eversources paying for the fixtures themselves if we don't get it done in time. What kind of insurances do we have that it's going to be done in time? Uh, None, sounds like. Well, George, George said he could make insurance. <laughs> yeah. uh, MA, would you go to the mic? We can't hear you, M.A. I, I'm, we can't I'm hear you. She, so if you're she, talking, she, we can't no, she, hear you. She, she asked me it. to relay what she yes. was talking to me. <laughs> right. So, um, we have COVID here, so we're yes. trying to keep separate. Go so ahead. what she just said is that George, who is our consultant on this, said he can get it done if we get the funding in by the 15th. Um, so. Well, I, I will make a motion that we sign it then. OK. Thank you. It's going to feel real good. It's going to get done in time, but okay. Christmas is on Saturday, so maybe he's thinking, you know, no holidays. I don't know. All right. <sighs> so, by Trevor McDaniel. By Dave Wolf. I Carolyn asked. Carolyn made the motion. I made the motion. You seconded it. I seconded it, or I did again. 
or a third time. Oh, and now you're going to add something to else? <laughs> Ease your mind a little bit. I doubt it. <laughs> the Green Communities Grant already has enough in it to right. pay for it. Right, yes. Lose. Yes. No, this would be extra icing, icing on the cake, right? This, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So what was the last one? Okay. Everybody voted, right? We're all good. Yeah. David voted. Yeah. They voted. Just make sure you fill in that, the number. Do you have a copy for me to sign? Or do you? The contract gets. Over to them. Do you want to sign I'll this one? Actually, or? no, I'll print All it right, out. All right, we'll print it out at the end of the meeting. Okay. Because I didn't print that one out. But Do you want my, I, we have my copy. You want my copy to sign? Let me see if Jennifer can print us a copy to sign. Here, here it is right here. Okay. I just didn't want to have the holes in it. They scan that way. Yeah. All right. So, That's fine. Okay. There's one in your packet, Casey, with no holes. Yep, right here. So, um, oh, you have it with no holes? Oh, no, I have it with it's, holes. It's on my desk. So, All right. Let me go get it. I'll grab it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is um, permits and licenses. Do we have any? Do yeah, we, we have, have two? Or actually three. Mm -hmm. Come with Victor's license. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Have thank a good you, night. Everybody. For uh, Magic Wings Incorporated in Wolfie's Restaurant. I make a motion we approve this. I'll second it. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Neff. I, Dave Wolfie. Let's see it first. Let's see. Well, the next thing yeah, is a Class nice. 3 dealer's license for James Byrne Jr. at the East Deerfield Auto Wrecking. 769 River Road. Um, oh. I make a motion we approve that. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Okay. okay. Do you have an appointment? Yes, we do have an appointment. Uh -huh. Yes, we do. Um, I think I think Kate's on actually. I think I included both. Her oh, is Kate Kate's on she's the meeting? On. Oh, great! She's on. Wonderful. I included I her read, email in her. Yeah, I read her email redacted resume. and all of her resume, and I I can't think of somebody more qualified to be on. I'm really yeah, excited. No, Thanks, Kate. pretty exciting. Thank you for. Uh, are, Kate, are you on? Do you want to? Hey, there you are. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for willing to serve. And um, uh, I love reading your, your email and um, all, of your, all of your qualifications. So I'm really, really excited to make a motion to um, approve Kate uh, Devlin to the, or Catherine Devlin to the um, Conservation Commission. And I will second that. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. Right. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Kim's hand is raised. Kim, did you have a comment? And then, yes, I just wanted to say that the Conservation Commission is very excited about this addition to our, our uh, commission. Uh, we've been almost 11 months now without a member and uh, after Louie's retirement. So thank you for your prompt acceptance of this overly qualified person. <laughs> yes, wonderful. And Kate, um, just it, as soon as you can, stop in and see um, Barb or, or um, Sarah or Janet at the town clerk's office and they'll swear you in. It exists, Kate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the printed copy. We'll finish that tomorrow. Yeah. Then come on in and, and get sworn in. So thank you okay. so much. I look forward to seeing you on the board and doing great work. Thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah. Really thank you. appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. The next thing on our agenda is the uh, 22 by recycled policy for approval. Yes, this is effective January 1st. We We're getting year. ahead of the game because Good. DEPs changed the goalposts on the dates now. <laughs> we do this every year. Yes, right? you do this yep. every year. We, we have to this. post it to, to qualify for some of their yeah. grants. So I'll make a motion to approve the uh, by recycled policy for um, the following year, starting um, January 1st. I will 1st. second that. Any further discussion? 
Very none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. And this is just, you know, it's, I guess for the public, it, it, it's just, it's buying recycled materials for what we do in town. It's also, you know, recycling it at the, at the transfer station. So please keep that up and, you know, bring in your stuff and separate when you can and um, just keep doing that work because we do, it, it helps us out um, a lot. So, um, and it helps out obviously the environment. So please continue. Okay, um, placeholder, worry about that? Nope. So I just wanted to give you an update on that contract. There were some land use questions that council had. So they're, they're discussing in-house mm -hmm. um, a, a couple of questions and they'll get back to me as soon as they are done. Okay. Hopefully by the end of the week. Uh, if, you, if we need a special meeting um, to sign off. You guys have approved it. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. The contract was published a certain way, but there are nuances to land sales that we need oh. to be mindful of. That's the reason. What are they so, trying to close? Do you think they want to close we need to, the end of So the, year? the thing is, is that the land closures, and there's other issues that, and I don't mean issues in a bad sense, I just mean details that we need to work out. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to be sure that all the eyes that need to look at it have a mm -hmm. chance to look at it. Okay. okay. Um, and I do, we'll put this on for the 29th. If I needed you to hold a meeting, I could ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll come okay. in for sure. Okay. Annual town meeting schedule. I was asked to add this to right. a certain chair. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, uh, well, one, we have to think about the annual. Yep. Um, what we wanted for a date on that do we want to do it in june well that was my question we... carolyn had mentioned it at several meetings ago and i had i didn't put it on and then you asked me about a special and i thought why don't we just talk about both of them so carolyn we, did you have other thoughts well i mean back to normal it's hard to predict if we're going to go back to normal yet um i i think uh the gym at frontier really did work out really well i do too i think we should I mean, schedule it for a, that last Monday in April, right? The I 25th? Mean, I felt, I, you know, given the fact that we successfully have run athletic programs and seem to be so far, Absolutely. I mean, it, as far as I can tell, there's been no transmission in the gym itself. No. Nope. I mean, we have the doors open. Um, you know, I think it's pretty, we have people on both, you know, and all the bleachers spread out. We had no issues. It was. Uh, Worked you know, out fine. I, I think it's fairly safe. Yep. It's just I do too. it's just really, really hard to say you know exactly what's gonna happen. I just like to get back to a schedule of having our annual town meeting when people expect it every year, our elections are the following Monday. We have any yeah. debt exclusions, it's the same you know, I, thing. Trevor, I agree. I agree. I, I it's just really hard to predict. I, I would say if rather than doing the auditorium, if we did the you know ask to have the gym available i think that was a good good decision right now and that you know we could play it by ear over the winter I, I, and decide between the two say, we, we need to review it in a, a month or two yeah and see where we're at i i mean i'm just hoping that this you know the new variant is is truly mild and if you're vaccinated yeah you're going to have a sniffle maybe but mm -hmm. that's about it right so um, we'll see where we are. I, okay. And we'll hopefully have more by then. We'll have more um, clinics. We'll stand up more clinics. So we'll yeah. have more school kids um, vaccinated because, you know, just like in the flu, those are, you know, that's our un, higher unvaccinated group at the moment. Mm -hmm. So if we have the ability to vaccinate that group to the level of our community, whole community, you know, if we get like 70%, 80%, that's, that's going to be a huge difference in the long run on how many people get, you know, are going to get annoyed and mm -hmm. get sick or just really sick. So um, we'll just have to say what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense to start there. And then you were thinking maybe a special in February? Well, I mean, we do have some things. The, to the reason I was it. thinking is because of the uh, 
getting the engineering costs for architectural costs yeah for the senior center right and if we were going to have the town meeting in june i wanted to try to get it expedited so uh, yeah and maybe have it in february right um you know i just I wanted to open up the discussion mm -hmm. on that to see, uh, you know, there are a couple other things that are probably could go on to the, uh, the special right now. Um, right. But it's just, here again, I'm just trying to get things expedited as quick as we can. I agree. Um, I agree with that. I know. Um, and, we, and we do need, even if we didn't have design money, we do need to fund. We haven't funded yet, like keeping the water out of that building and starting on the remediation right. of that a little bit. Yeah. Well, you we, know. we should... We are making. We have made the decision to preserve it. Yeah. And use it, reuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means we should make every effort to to minimize the potential damage this mm -hmm. winter. Yeah. So you know that's you know, obviously in the winter, February is a hard month to be weatherizing right. anything. But, but by the time you fund but, it, then but you by could, the time we fund it and everything, yeah, you know, there's a month later that you know you can moving. get ahead of the procurement. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That takes, um, it does. And try to, does. you know, and I and I realize it's, it's an unknown asking number. a lot because you know the specials are. You but know, then I again, some people they don't want a special because they say we're trying to push something through. But the requirement have, for a special is higher than it is for an annual. It is. Um, but we have we have money in the capital stabilization. Plan. Right. And and if it will preserve the building. It makes right. sense just to, to get do started this, on to that. have our special town meeting as soon as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and if and and not worry about where we're taking the money from. We're going to take it from the stabilization account mm -hmm. to do to preserve yeah. the building from further damage. Yeah. I mean, how how can you question that? Right. That is a legitimate expense. Yeah. <coughs> so you want to do something in February? Yeah. But originally I said January, but first yeah. I had to look to make sure she didn't have any weapons. <laughs> I would say February. Yeah, but Casey, if, no. you, if, you did it, if you did it from tonight, do you think we could squeeze in at the end of January? Isn't it? We just need three, three weeks. Yeah, but we oh. need to know what's going to go on that. Yeah, and what's yeah. going to go on in Warren if we don't February. have an amount like you know, February. Some of the funds that we're planning on or thinking about using for that is uh, CPA funds. So we got to apply the CPA and everything as well on top of that group. Tim left. Darn it. Huh? I Tim said left Tim too. left, darn it. Um, but I, I do think if we had a little bit more time, you know, council always seems to look at it, yeah. we scramble around, so try to get the more time. Know. You know, we're going to be in, I know. In, in And so in we Boston. don't even have a thinking, cost estimate. I know. Yeah. Sort of. But can, can you know, um, those pads, you can get them at Tractor Supply or the Greenfield Farmer. I don't know what those are. Those, they stop rubber, the water. Huge, I know what she's talking about. They're, um, I use it, they pad my stalls. So but what are you going to... Water you just lean them up against the building. And just you lean think? them up, and they're like forty-two bucks a piece. And you could just lean them, you lean them up against it, and it, at least in the in the area where the water is going in, you lean them up. You have to look at that a little I, bit. Where, so, yeah. Well, uh, where the water comes off of our house mm -hmm. um, it, and hits. Hits. Yeah. Right. It. You know, over the years, we've kept, kept replacing the concrete underneath. To yeah, it just keeps it. eating away. So yeah. what we did is replace the concrete, and then we put the pad yeah. on it, and we just put, uh, like, a my husband built a, a wood Cricket. frame yeah. thing so that it's slightly mm -hmm. um, sloped, away. sloped Sloped away, and you just have the pad sitting on the wood frame, and it slopes away into the driveway. And so it hits, comes off the roof. It, and goes you know, this way these, instead of in. Wicked, intense rainstorms that we get. It hits the pet pad and blows off. And we've had the same pad for years and years. And, right. and my horse, the only reason I have to replace it on my horse once in a while is because, you know, it's the same place he digs his, you know, his foot. Yeah. He gets excited when he gets fed. So he digs the same spot. And you have to replace it once. Well, and here again, you know, my thought process, and you know, you know, windows a lot better than I do, was just buying like a six hundred dollar urethane kit mm -hmm. and going around and just spray all the windows with the urethane because it's just a temporary fix. Yeah, you just that would make everything up. watertight. Yeah, it would it would for sure. I mean, I was in a basement. They the, sprayed everything and get the so, water. So I mean, we don't have to spend very much money to do. No, but unfortunately, Kevin's budget is only twenty five hundred dollars for the right. maintenance. Is, is there any way that we can come up with us figuring out where we could get 
We'll have to talk to Brenda and see what's. Yeah, I can talk to Brenda and Kevin, around. but I got to talk to Kevin because he yeah. had an idea about encircling the envelope um, and doing something similar as what you just described. Well, it's just that oh. you can put those pads in the back of like, this. It's the size of the back of a pickup truck. Right. I wonder you if we could just do it with tarps. You could buy four mm -hmm. or five of them. And you could just put them where the spot where the water's mm -hmm. you know hitting it. Right. Um, um, do you have a hand up? Lily? Is there? Yeah, we can't. Oh, is yes. That, is that your hand? Hi, it, that's my hand. I um, because I'm on the um, the CPA. I just wanted to share with you all um, something that I just want you to be aware of, and that is most times you can't get money to cover operational costs, but if you do a project using CPA funds, you can continue to use CPA funds for operations, AKA maintenance going forward. So I think, I mean, that's really unusual. And there are, um, Tim's got a great graph of it all, but I was not aware of that until we talked about it at our last meeting. So I thought I would share that with you. Okay, thank that's you. That's good to know, thanks. Thank you, sure. thank you Lily. That's sure. really helpful. I well, think you did mention it, but I, it, I had forgotten. I think I just also wanted to mention, you know, with town meetings coming up, Barbara is a really, instrumental player in that and she is um, entertaining a position at another town uh, so we need to start kind of thinking about how that'll work and as it relates to our timing I spoke to her she knows that I'm was going to mention this tonight that you know that she might be moving on uh, from our town clerk collectors um, you know, and election, she handles elections and sets up, you know, works with right. all of you in town meetings. So we need to start working on laying that out. She asked me to kind of mention that tonight to you all that, that that's something that she's looking to do. And so that plays into the staff time to do all this and to interview yeah. and, yeah. and juggle up that. So it's a lot going on in the next couple months. And um, okay. with the searches at this, you know the wastewater treatment plant. Um, trying How's to that going? horribly. Oh, no, it's still horrible. There's nobody doing work. I don't know where everybody is. I watched a documentary about four children. It was a frontline or something like that. It was only in 2011, and it was amazing how many people were out of jobs just 10 years ago, and now you can't get people to work anywhere. And especially when it becomes a technical job like a wastewater treatment, you need schooling and there's no licensing, the licensing, licensing and the, yeah, licensing. the quali qualifications to do a complex job like that. Why do you think I'm so happy we got out? Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. It's very difficult to find people willing to serve in municipal government and doing these and, kind of technical jobs. Part of the problem, and it started back when I was in high school, which was Long time just ago. a couple years ago, <laughs> just a couple years. Was ago. that they were always pushing people to go into college prep courses? Everything yeah. had to be college prep. Everything yeah. had to be college prep. Franklin well, Tech is you a know, great if you school. look at the demographics at Deerfield, yeah. the people with the money are the ones that can work with their hands. That's true. I have a lot of you people. Know, I graduated from I, Franklin I, Tech. I had people applying with master's degree for a $15 an hour entry level job because mm -hmm. they couldn't get the job that they went to school for. Well, it, and it's good to get into college education, but it's well, also- I'm not knocking that. Uh, of course and, not, no. And I'm just saying like the people that I went to school with, I graduated from Franklin Tech in the trades and a lot of my classmates started businesses and are now one of the, you know, a lot of employers in, the, yes. in Franklin yep. County. They employ a lot of people doing these you know, yep. plumbing, electrical, just think it's we we do need to communicate to our children that it's a great avenue to go is the technical trades yeah. um, for sure but even and, and even talking yeah, and even talking with so um, pay extra for that you know with our community colleges about trying to get wastewater jobs an yeah. avenue going for these kind of technical things and also you financial know financial jobs, jobs yes. in you know account, treasures, you know, local accountants. treasures accountants Clerks, they're, they're sparse. Town administrators, all of that. MMA did a whole um, advertising program about two years, ago. Two years yeah. ago about trying to get people into the into municipal government. Uh -huh. And 
there's a huge need and, and, and I don't think people have an idea of how critical it is. And when you have the baby boomers, I forget, uh, Mary talked Mary's about like, it last like night. How many? Million? There's 80 million and there's probably what? 70 million in, in the, what we, what's millennials. term millennials. But the in between. And we're the chunk group, yeah, my, the two of us, yes, like 45 million. Gen X is, there's only like 45 million. So you have all these people retiring and, and nobody, nobody there to fill to the jobs. jobs. It's going to be it's a true. It's huge true. problem. It's true. That's my, one of the reasons my husband still works. Yeah. I don't want to let him go. Right. He's got all that experience and talent and yeah. and, and how do you and find somebody? Degrees. Yeah. I know. And, and so we're, you know, towns are in a really tough spot. I know. And we're going to have to spend a lot of money, taxpayer money, getting through this, this drought of employees to get, you can't just stop, you can't shut off the wastewater treatment plant. You can close the transfer station, maybe, and people would all have to buy, you know, dump, you know, contracts. That's people true. to come pick up their things. I won't, this is, I'm not starting a fire here. I'm just <laughs> saying you could do that. You cannot do that with a wastewater treatment. Trevor, we've already been through this. You can't not flush the toilet. You got to. And you can't just flush it into the river. You got to treat know, it. I know, I know, I know. It's no got me really to worried. It's a huge amount of money. It's very but worried. We've already gone through this. The town knows that we have to support the system. And, and I just, I but you need to support it with staff. And, yeah. the, and I don't know I, how to I do know. that right now. I'm panicked. I don't I know. really know I, I where do. to find that person. <sighs> Sorry to be a Debbie Downer. I, well, <laughs> to do that, but I just really wanted to say that, you know, with, yeah. with these people, with staff changing, constantly in in town government it's going to be a challenge to do all this stuff yep. I know. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yep. okay so so february ish february -ish, yes okay. yeah let's go with february -ish. Yeah. not march -ish. february -ish. about late february -ish. <laughs> mm. let's do a valentine's day you say march let's i'm going to say january <laughs> No, no, no. February ish. We need to at least get some sort of understanding yeah. of what the yes. cost would be. Yes. And I figure agree. out, you yep. know, whether we could even go through what Lily suggested. That yep. would be useful, but we need right. to have a, a start place. Yeah, yep. for sure. I agree. Okay. Okay. Uh, next thing, FERCOG. Well, well. Be my recommendation that we do not reconsider our vote. And our letter to the Fercog. Um, I know um, Alex has been working with me, and like I said, I, I I'm fairly excited. We have three good new part-time nurses that are going to be part of this. And part of which? So I guess explain the grant. The grant. The grant. So there is two different things. I, I think we should explain to the public what's right. going on. So we have we have for many years have been belonged to the Fercog for our nursing town we belong to FERCOG for a lot of things but um but we our buy services we buy first. services of, of all kinds of different things one of them has been health um a health nursing program lisa white and others you know they have an office here and they see people um and i think through covid things have um i think they have learned a lot we have learned a lot about the inefficiencies of um, trying to run any program, I guess, and then and then as you add different towns, how much service are you getting, or is it the service that you want, or how much autonomy does a town have to do what we want to do? Um, I just took the survey for, and I don't know if anybody anybody wants to do that. There's a survey that is due by Friday for the Franklin County. Um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, their, their kind of assessment on, on COVID and their response to it and how well oh, they I did. Need to see that. You haven't seen it yet? No. Please fill it out. Um, can yeah. you forward me that? Yes, I will. Yep. Um, and it really, um, you know, it's just how municipalities, how, how many municipalities, you know, how municipalities thought, you know, what, what um, authorities FERCOG had, like they didn't have any authorities to run this. So what did they have for authorities? What did, they, what did we perceive they had? Um, what, what did we give them, the council give them for authorities? And what did the 
contracts that the towns came up with to help everybody address COVID. Um, and then what are the deficiencies in that? What are the deficiencies in the state? How they interacted with us as boards of health? How boards of health kind of didn't want to deal with it? Um, not ours, we were all in. And I think we're a different animal than many towns. Many towns have, <clears throat> some towns have boards of health that aren't super active um, or have the volunteers. And I think a lot of this leads to your uh, passion for public health and what you have built over the years and for volunteers and always making sure people are signing up for trainings and learning how to do different things that are coming out and being on the cutting edge of what the state's doing and what we're doing uh, for public health. And I think that, um, I think what came out of this is we realized that we didn't have the autonomy we wanted and we, we had to deal with um, a top down uh, decision of um, somebody else deciding how we were going to tackle COVID in our own town. And we're part of that. So we made those decisions too, but we're one vote versus, you know, and, and more and 16 now. It used, to, it used to be what, 10 or something like that, but eight. Or, or eight. So for over the last few years, town, especially the last two years, towns in Franklin County have realized that they don't have the capacity to handle a pandemic or they don't have the volunteer structure, all of that. So they've kind of signed up for for the community um, health program through the FERCOG to do all of that work for them. And they do other things. So for Deerfield, we have our own inspections. We have Alex that will go out and do septic in, you know, uh, inspections and food we'll do inspection. food inspections and different things like that. So we have inspection services. Part of that, part of FERCOG's fee-based program is community nursing, but it's also inspections and stuff. We've always retained that. We've retained our own fees and all that for inspections. And we really just use FERCOG for community nursing. Eight hours a week, is that it? Supposedly. Supposedly eight hours a week. So, um, and, uh, you know, we, we our community has come to rely on the quality of nursing that Lisa has given us and, and others. I mean, they've done a very good job. The nurses have done a very good job taking care of us through this, um, but, we, but, I think we do need to think about where we want to go from here. And I feel a little nervous because I feel like we are, we don't have a solid plan going forward. It's not that I don't trust you. <laughs> I do, because I know that you care about our public health more than anybody. And I know you'll have a plan, but as of this minute, we're like, we don't know who's going to nurse when and where they're going to be and all that stuff. Um, we don't always know that with FERCOG either. I mean, we have a, series of numbers and you know we're going to give you eight hours and but we also for the 20,000 that we spend on nursing program we also offer an office for for the staff to work out of which is a dollar amount and a need and it's, it's very <clears throat> valuable space if, it, if we were in a big building with 100 rooms not super valuable for us super valuable because we don't have a lot of real estate here so it's just trying to figure out well, we paid, what to do here. We paid twenty two thousand, and we get a credit of roughly forty five hundred dollars for mm -hmm. that space. Mm -hmm. So we would still want a space, but I, I know David. I had talked to David, you know, when we were talking about the church. When we get the church renovated for the senior use, I was hoping we could move the nurse services over there, so that instead of four hours a week which is what the FaceTime is, mm -hmm. we will actually have FaceTime for our seniors um, multiplied. You, basically, when the senior center is open, you would have no services available. And, and the dollar amount that we pay already would cover it because the going rate is about $40 an hour, whereas we pay with our contribution about $65 an hour, which is a pickup. And you know, Lisa was our nurse, you know, years and years ago, and I went to the finance committee and I said, I, you know, I was criticized because it was going to be expensive, more overhead, and, you know, and, and all that. But I argued for it because Lisa has been and is a fantastic public health nurse. 
But the problem is there's so many communities now, we don't actually get her. And so let's just, you know, we, we have hired under the grant that we got for contact tracing. Um, if we can make it through the winter, we, well, we have contact tracing through the fur cause, which we paid $20,000 extra last year for. Right. And I'm hoping, you know, I mean, I'm doing everything I can to keep the expenses down and they did receive a grant. So I'm, I'm not expecting a bill because like when we had an outbreak with one of the, you know, like the, the railroads, mm -hmm. you know, it's confidential, but you know, there, I'm the one that traced it down and, and made sure everything was happening because they, they didn't have a contact number, stuff like that. So I'm doing everything I can to keep the expenses down. And I'm hoping that we won't receive any additional bill for that. And, and being part of the grant, the $250,000 grant that with Greenfield Montague and Sunderland, I'm hoping that, you know, that gives us at least 20 hours of nursing time for our community. And um, I'm hoping that that, and it was clear when I, Kevin Cranston, who is um, from DCH, wanted to know which program, which program we're going to yeah. use. And, and I have worked with him for the Mosquito District for years. So I called them and I explained what was happening. And I said, we didn't have a plan yet. And we said, there was no rush to make a decision until June 30th. We had to, you know, we can't double dip. And then, right. And so I feel that we'll be able to get some additional hours for the seniors at the church and that will be stationed at the church and that will free up our office over here for the community planner. And then, you know, hopefully we'll, we're working on things like Alex and I were talking about the analysis. We want to use the model that Greenfield did for their analysis of cases over the winter. And, you know, I'm, I will be much more willing to work on trying to come up with something that works for us. It's extremely frustrating. And I just don't know if I can spend any more time in frustration to try to set up clinics when I don't have the ability to set up, to mobilize our EDS. Well, that's, EDS because that's what I want to understand. We don't have the medical um, staff. Whereas Greenfield, they got frustrated and they said, fine, we'll just, we're going to do it ourselves. Well, that's and what they I were want very the successful. For. Right. And so, and I feel very comfortable working with Jennifer Hoffman, the health director. And so. So um, will they have a, we this have entity our own will have. We'll, we'll have our own. We, we have will our own have number. our own number. Under we whose, have our own number. But un, it's under a doctor, right? It's under. Um, uh, ben Benson. Dr. Benson and, and Ted Bridger. And uh, nothing will change. But we, what we'll do is we'll work with Jana Ferguson from DPH and just do what Jennifer did. And we'll, the, the thing is, COVID's not going away. We have to figure out a way that, and, and, you know, I don't, just because, I mean, there's no question the fur cause handles, Lisa's wonderful about making sure we get homebound people done. We'll do that. But the majority of people still, it comes down to convenience and safety. A lot of people don't want to drive outside the community to get their shots. And if we can do it efficiently and have control of the medical part so that we can say, we need six vaccinated, four is not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. We can get, we have enough volunteers, excellent volunteers that we could have six volunteers. But we couldn't, even though Jackie Choate is, you know, Board of Health in um, Conway and has been our EDS team since the very beginning with me, she, and she's a wonderful quick vaccinator, she couldn't vaccinate that day on Wednesday because she's not covered, wasn't covered by the Vax Plus liability. So even, or Nancy Hayes, who has all volunteered through this entire COVID, um, you know, uh, pandemic, they're excellent vaccinators, but you couldn't have them vaccinate to be the two, you know, additional vaccinators. So we had the backup. And it's so frustrating because we, we can run and we know how to correctly. do it. And you don't have people lining up in the, in the hallways. And that was why we did a drive up to begin with. Right. Because the, the state forced us to do the one at Frontier the first time in 2005. And I'm like, wow, 
I don't know much. I don't know much about medical stuff, but I'm I'm a mother, and the last thing you do is you line up, you know, line up. up your kids and take all your healthy kids to the doctors for a well baby clinic shot, and then get all your kids end up sick, and it's like, you know, it's the same deal. So you end up wearing polio shots. It's a lot of money in this. I know, but I'm I'm just saying I think we can come, we can work together yeah. as a group. Melanie Zamoyski is is the Montague person, and and that's Dave Zamoyski's mm -hmm. wife. She's she's in the nurse program at uh, teachers at GCC, and what I'm looking for is a new Lisa, a young new Lisa that we can pull out and pluck out of the nursing program and work with our seniors that has a lot of energy and you know good things just like. We, we did with Lisa. We recognize she has wonderful people skills. She's an amazing person. And, and she worked, she's just very calm. And, and so that's what we're actually hoping to do, is have Melanie um, connect us with some really great um, public health nurses. I would love a meeting with the other towns to understand exactly how this well, is going to lay out. Well, we have a meeting, we have a meeting on, on Monday at 11 o'clock that we're going to be talking about this, um, how we're going to work for the contact tracing, and then how we're going to use the hours that we don't use for contact tracing for public health nursing. Because they were saying, the state was saying you didn't have to spend that money on contact tracing anymore. We're choosing to keep track of what we're we want to do at some level. Yes. Maybe uh, not full bore, but well, at some I level. Well, I think what we can do is, you know, my... Uh, process is, you know, I have every single um, case in my book, and then I try to draw conclusions from them, but I think doing it on the spreadsheet, what Jennifer is doing it, and have more analysis is far more, is far more effective to well, give us... Safer, God forbid, something well, happens to you, too, in your But what we want to do is, and this was where the whole thought process for the shared services to begin with is that you do this for all our the same information you're putting into the spreadsheet you do it for all four communities because we have so much overlap in the because schools. of the schools workplace right you know if you have that information you you are so much better prepared and you have an idea of what's happening and truly happening on a community level and yeah. that's what, and that's how you decide what we're going to do in response to what's happening on the community level, and 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 having that information is is really key into making good decisions and keeping the public safe and keeping our schools open. I, we were one of the most successful school districts in the entire state about keeping our schools open mm -hmm. and playing sports programs, and part of it was educational. Well, part of it is we had a fantastic administration that was willing mm -hmm. to work with us. We had good school nurses. We had good faculty and staff. But we also had really good kids that understood that we want the schools open. So you've got to wear masks mm -hmm. and you've got to be effective in the locker rooms or limit your locker room exposure because that's where it's happening. Right. So the kids were cooperative and, and, and bought into it. And we were able to have sports programs, and and now we have the testing say, and and we do have people signed up, so they, you know, you are testing, doing pool testing every week, and I mean that makes a huge difference, and 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 kids are wearing the mask, so even if we have a positive case, and you've identified the close contact, because the kids have been wearing the mask successfully. The faculty and staff have been supportive of helping kids wear it successfully, especially in the younger grades. We, we haven't had classroom spread. And we've been able to keep our schools open. And keeping the economy going and keeping people employed and keeping um, more normalcy is, is key, is keeping the schools open. As soon as you cut, close the schools, it's chaos. People can't work, it's routines are, are all messed up and kids are not as successful at school. Mm. They need the school exposure. So, I mean, to me, and part of that is making sure we get vaccinations out to the public. Right, and that's my I, biggest concern. I, we have, South County has an outstanding group of volunteers 
was willing to come together and, and do that. And so it's been extremely frustrating to me to not be able to stand up our EDS right. as much as we, we can. Mm -hmm. And yes, now we're working with the VAX bus. That seems to be the next best. But it still is frustrating that we have to wait in line. So my only concern is that will we get vaccine from the state? Because you know, a I, lot, because a I, lot of the issue was the state said they polled a lot of boards of health across the state. Most of them said, no, we don't have the capability to vaccinate. So they said, no, we're going to go through CVS. And then, you know, OK, we'll let some come to Franklin County, you know, and it, it was well, just because the CVS, state was miserable. In this CVS whole process. And, well, if we advocate as and this is where it comes in, the population comes in. Greenfield and Montague are our biggest mm -hmm. population centers. Right. We're after that. So if you, and Sunderland. So if you take the combined population and we say, we are, a, we want to do this, mm -hmm. then they will allow us to do it. And they will give us the vaccine. And that's what happened with- That's what I want to hear. That's how Jennifer Hoffman got vaccine. She, did, she never ran anything. Right. They didn't even have a viable EDS group. But, they had, you know, the firefighters, right. everybody came through. We all volunteered the yeah. surrounding areas. We all volunteered and, and, and went up and worked or, you know, a lot of my volunteers worked up there. And, you know, that she was able to, you know, Jana Ferguson walked her through how the procedure was to, you know, get into the system, how you do reports of vaccine, what you're using. And, and it, it's all in line. They use PrepMod first, which is what we trained right. on first, and now North it's on Carolina. the caller platform, which we use for our flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, the state had just rolled it out, so they hadn't even, you know, wasn't able even to do more than one vaccine. We had just the flu. We had to give out stickers for the high dose. You know, it wasn't even loaded up enough to have two different vaccines. But now color's been around since, you know, the fall. And, you know, you can have all your vaccines on it, pediatric, Moderna, Johnson, Johnson, Pfizer, whatever. And, um, you know, it's, it's capable now. And that seems what we're going to use that platform for a while. So, I, I mean, I can say that we're going to work on it. I just want to see a plan, you know, yeah. know, know that we're comfortable about this. Yeah. Because I trust you. Yeah. You know that. I, well, thank you. I, I do really care. And I, I know and, I, and that was one of the things that was upsetting me is that our seniors really weren't getting out to the alley. And, you know. I was just the autonomy part of it has always. Been just we're still not. Like it's, we're. I mean, we're going to still be in a part of a group. Well, no, I get that, but yeah. would it's, that group can make the decision. But for people, each of the towns, Sunderland, um, Montague, Greenfield, and Deerfield, all have money that we spend on public health. I mean, public right. health nursing. We spend, right. we have 22,000 in our budget. Right. So what, you know, and we could, you know, say we should really spend about 27,000. But right. you, with that office, if you yeah. add in the office. But, you know, we all have money, which means that you can hire one to two more nurses for, and, and, and remember, we only get eight hours, supposedly. So... This way, if they're at the church, maybe it's much, it's, the senior center is open three days a week. My idea would be three days a week, there would be somebody there to see the seniors. And I, and if you look at $40 an hour, that, that m our money that we spend currently would stretch for the three days. And so we just, you know, and it's good to have, you know, other type of nurses maybe that you know younger nurses that we could have for a while I mean if somebody really like loves working here we'll have you know a nurse for four or five years maybe so or more so the idea is to work and see if you know well Robin Knapp is one of the one nurses she's lovely yeah, Mary so. Ellen Sloan another lovely person Meg Tudorin lives here in town so I mean it, they're already, we know that we have three part-time nurses already. So finding someone to fill additional hours is not, I don't think it's going to be a big stretch. Okay. 
So the only way we, we only have to take a vote if we want to rescind, right? They do want clarification. So they want a response to their letter. May I read um, their letter? Is it here yeah, in our right packet? taken under consideration. Well, we Sorry need to be clear because they're building their budget, David. Yeah, but they're building our, their budget based on our decision, our original vote, so that's fine. We can just move ahead with that. So, so I think the response would, I think the board should at least promulgate a response that addresses whether that vote would be rescinded or not and that if that's the choice of the board not to do that then we just write that in a letter and send it to them just for clarity because that's really what they're asking for okay. because of that there's two things there's this grant process but there's also um that transition that we would have to consider so and to Trevor's point, how do we facilitate that? Because we don't know how long it's going to take to deal with the church. We don't know the kind of space that we're going to have in the church because a lot of that room space is already spoken for from what I understand. Yeah, I was going to ask the board tonight if we can, um, I can approach Jeff and Tom about changing the MOU well, to incorporate that space. I don't know what that looks like. I mean, that, I don't know what that would look like. Okay. Well, the, the um, health district is trying to move out their stuff from the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, they do say that. Um, I think they're making every effort to do that. Because there is quite a lot of um, extra stuff over there. That's not, our, not, not necessarily our EDS stuff.
Your comments tonight, I assume you do not want to rescind that vote. That is correct. I'm almost done. One sec. How much money have we been getting from the PERPA to the public health on the grants? Grant money. Have we been getting any mm -hmm. grant money? No. 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 If they do get grants, it goes toward all the towns to participate. I will say that some of their grant funds offset some costs, um, but you don't normally see those calculations. They're, they're pretty, why do you call them? It's their administrative costs, the ones indirect. Well, some of those grants okay. do do co go toward the indirects, which can impact savings for the towns as a group. But they don't necessarily allocate to one town or another specifically. Okay. It's a hard decision, very, it's very hard. hard. I, it is hard because, you know, I, but on the other hand, I feel like we need more services for our seniors. And, you know, I, I really want them over at the church. Can, and I want to well, build can we hold off them. on making a decision tonight until after your Well, we have the 29th meeting. to tell them, but um, as they said, by the end of December, but mm -hmm. um, they, have to finalize their budget. they have to finalize their budget. meeting Monday, right? Yeah, it's sure. uh, this is how we set up, mm -hmm. how we're going to set up the use of the three nurses that we just Why don't we have that meeting and then take that vote? Okay. Do we have other information? Like, we don't have an MOU or anything. Well, that... We, we should probably get that yeah. done. If we, you're going to consider that... At the church? No, no for just on this to be project. In this other, yeah, because it's no different program. than you would do an MOU for the car. Yeah. So we need that information. And if we're participating in, in a grant, generally we would get information on that grant. Well, okay. Greenfield is the lead community, so they would do the reporting. It's just like, I'm not worried about the reporting. I'm worried about the records because well, our it, records get audited regularly. I just want to know that, yeah, so the information they have on the grant. Yeah. And then you have this meeting set up what you're going to have for coverage. So it's a big change. Yeah. I'm probably I think we're going to get, I think we're going to end up with more, more public health. And that's why I'm, and, and, there I, is, and I want the ability to set up EVSs too. I, I get that. I, I totally understand that. My, my other concern too is infrastructure, laptops, space, like paper, ink, like all the things that go along with making sure that you've got, I mean, there's a cost to all of that, which we just got to make sure is accounted for. We know that, you know, yep. we're buying into that. And whether it costs us 25 or instead of 22, the number really isn't the main thing to me. It's just that the coverage is good and that, and that we, the, the staff have the equipment they need to make sure that we're serving our people. Well, I think if we can set up the office in the church, then hopefully we can get that staff in the senior center to open. And that means we've tripled the hours, mm -hmm. literally. For the same Still amount figure of out space to do that. Yeah. And that There's the so only I, place there is to do it is so the, that people feel comfortable going. And with Sunderland part of this grant, you know, and that is the senior center for Sunderland or in Deerfield, then you know, it's additional Sunderland's hours can be in there too. So I mean, I think we're going to end up with better, and 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 like I said. This is not anything to do with leasing. Oh, I, mean, I know we love that. Leasing, of course. But we're not seeing leases, or we're not having the availability of leases, and, and certainly they're not guaranteeing that. They, yeah, so they can't. There's too many towns. There's too many towns. So if we're not getting Lisa, which is why we joined the health district, was to keep Lisa for our seniors, then let's let's see if we can get the new a new Lisa, a new you know a new really wonderful. Person. But in the meantime, there's no three, replacement for Lisa. Well, but but for <laughs> the but in the meantime, the three people that we have hired 
have, have, you know, or that we potentially have interviewed and hopefully will have hired um, are, are wonderful people. And you know one of them. Oh, I know. No, I have, and, I have no doubt. And nurses are good people. So I, yeah. uh, it's a matter of, you know, what their tasks will be versus, you know, strictly contact tracing versus nursing. I just want to see that. We know that we're covered. So, okay. Well, we're getting 20 hours versus eight. Right. So whether we spend that all in contact tracing or we spend that all, that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. And then we haven't spent a dollar of our own money. Right. And then our own money, our 22000 not including the office, but our 22000 will also buy additional hours. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a win-win. Certainly for three, it's a three-year grant or a two-year grant? It's a two-year grant. Two-year grant. And, and we, being in the shared district with Greenfield, Montague, and Sunderland, I feel like we're going to be able to um, attract additional dollars. So it will go beyond the two-year. Mm -hmm. All right. So right. the meeting goes Monday. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is mail. You had, I added a couple of things to your mail. Okay. Um, we received information from municipal aggregation, two different um, pieces of information, as well as a copy of a letter from um, Agent White on an occupancy. So I just included that. Mm -hmm. The aggregation is still doing great. It's doing well, it's but great. they're about to send out, so they're about to send more information out, and so. To people, right? Denise Allard, yeah, that another basic mailing is yep. gonna be sent out tomor tomorrow. Well, um, it's doing great. You know, it, it would be so easy, it would just be so wonderful if we looked at what Eversource's. Oh yeah, point, point one three or something like that. It's the, their rate cents. increase yeah. versus what we're saying we're st to people. We're still at, um, let's see, in, G in January, from January. Nine and a half cents. Yeah, nine and a half cents versus, um, versus Eversource is 13, 14. almost 14. So it's still way better. And that's all the way till 2024. So um, can we get that information out, Casey? I was trying to. I have a hard time Looks posting like it's going to be mailed. PDFs on on, on well, actually, it's probably so. a link that we should do yeah. from. Yeah. And I think that's somewhere. how Jennifer does it. Is she puts great. it up on the website and then puts a link on Facebook to it. Yep. Because um, even just this letter right here to, that's going out to the basic yes. service, you know, it just says Eversource's rate is point one three, almost, you know, one three seven, versus our you know standards point one, point oh nine five. Yes. You know, someone called me, and I, t I, I did send them to e um, MA, because, mm -hmm. but how do you, how do they read their electric? This is, and again, this is only supply, so yeah, delivery is, is just, you have yeah. no, you know, Control that's everybody's that. thing. But how do, how do people read their electric bill to you know that they're involved or not? Right? They're automatically involved. Um, unless they opt unless out. Unless they opt out. Okay, so if they actually took no action, like actually yeah, calling somebody they're automatically out, in it. So they're automatically saving money. Yep. Okay. Unless they have a program with somebody else or, you know, that, and they, they weeded all those out originally, like that had some other deal they somewhere tried. else for supply. But, um, but most everybody is, you know, if you have basic service in town, you automatically enrolled in. And then... And then you could choose that other optional service that gave you, you know, so the standard rate that everybody got bumped into is 5% uh, of, of Massachusetts um, class one recs above the minimum state requirement. So renewable energy, we got you into at least 5% renewable energy. Right. And then you could for a little bit more, which is still less than Whatever source, Whatever Whatever source is, basic services. Yeah, you you can go up to fifty percent of mass class class one recs above the minimum state requirement. So you can you can really make a difference on using green energy 
and and it really it, for you know a small amount of money compared to you know you're even still less than Eversource. So you can still call. You would have to call and make that change. And sometimes it may be more than whatever source is in the summer or something like that. But people may want to pay a little bit more to, to make a difference on climate change. So it's, there's good information here. I look forward to you know people reading it again, and we'll get it out on the web. And it's good and stuff. And so in the supplier services of their monthly bill, which is usually midway through the bill, mm -hmm. Dynagy would be listed as the supplier. Yep. Not distribution, but supply. Supply only. And someday when we get solar on our landfill. Yeah. Someday. Someday? Okay. Okay. Um, we have to make comments on the Board of Health letter. You don't have Lily to has her hand raised. Information. Somebody said, oh, Lily. Lily. I, I don't know. Um, I can't see where you are in the agenda exactly, but I just um, wanted to make sure that you all received the email from me as uh, chair of senior housing requesting the removal of a member who has been unable to attend for the last year. Oh, really? Thank you. I am really <laughs> sorry. Somebody wanted to I think we put that on a different agenda. Okay, it just it has a it's a oh. challenge for us because we are such a small committee that and we won't need to have a quarum. Um, yes. I had so, asked for it to be on the meeting of the agenda for the 15th. Um, who is it? Um, Did you is ask it, me? Who is it? Oh. Is the person interested in stepping it's, down? De yeah, Deborah totally understands and we'd love to have her back when her situation changes um and she's cc'd on the email to you all as well okay yeah yeah people get busy and that's, I, oh, that's really, i'm so sorry that's all right i'm glad i hung in here <laughs> i just it's just because of our challenge with a so quorum you remove them then your numbers are less and you're able to have a quorum yes <laughs> precisely yeah. there's only three of us at a meeting yeah we're two yeah, we're <laughs> so yeah um so, so uh, I, if, I put it in it items on it just because I did forward it. I did read it. I read it. I did forward so it. Uh, and I, honest, I understand. I didn't forget. Okay. I just forgot tonight. I just don't have so much stuff on. You said you it's just that we have a meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> so I would, I would greatly appreciate it if it's can. She, she forwarded this in December fifth. Okay. Yeah. We had just finished 5th, yeah. our meeting. Uh, I mean, we had our meeting on December first. So I made her. I told her I would put it on the agenda for the 15th and um I, so I didn't do see you want to make a motion yes i would make a motion um what's deborah's last name darling Raphael. deborah darling Raphael. yeah um uh to remove her from the senior housing um committee officially remove her um and make it clear that she can without prejudice or whatever <laughs> just approach us again and we'd love to have her back she when yeah. she did come she was yeah. really good. No, people get busy. And life she, changes. Just, she just can't Fine. make Thursday night meetings. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Walton. And thank you, Debbie, yeah. for. Um, thank you for your under, service. Yes, thank you yeah. for doing what you've done and, and also for understanding why we're doing it. <laughs> it's just so we can vote. Be able to have a meeting. Right, Lily. <laughs> and anybody else? that does have the time and wants to serve, please let us know. Yes. Lily? Yes. Do you want to give me a call? <laughs> uh, tomorrow sort of a thing? No, you mean? no, no, like now. Right now? Right now? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Thanks. Uh, sure. Right. Uh, Thank um, you. Can you put it in the... Okay. 1400, Simpson 104. 104. All right, we'll do. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Good night. Lily, for reminding me. I'm so sorry. I forgot. Ugh. Um, Casey. Yes. Do you want to? Do you have any? You want to hit on? I do or? have a couple. Oh, okay. So, speaking of landfill, um, I do have. It's not great information, but I do have some information. Um, then Axelman from Nexant sent over a request for right of entry. So Kevin and I process that. They wanna do some engineering evaluations 
as part of their development plan. They're still waiting for Eversource to give them the go ahead. Yeah. But they want to get ahead of. Okay. Get a get a little bit ahead of it so that they can before the ground free. Well, I shouldn't say ground freezes before the snow flies. Yeah. Um, in anticipation of hearing something hopeful from Eversource. So great. That's that great. did come through. Sounds good. Um, let's see. I did want to let everybody know. And I wanted to first of all thank everybody that came to the trainings, the mm -hmm. respectful workplace trainings. Right. It was we had four different sessions. The last session was the lightest, and that was the one that I went to last night with Trevor. And I have to say, I think it's a great place. It was shorter than we would normally conduct conduct that training, but frankly, it's a good start because it gives Thanks people a flavor mm -hmm. of what kind of how those things work. Usually that training is conducted in a longer format with breakout groups, so you can right. role play some of these things. Yep. But regardless, we started. Good start. Yeah. And absolutely. so I did want to let people know that I'll be circling back around with to, to figure out how we can provide a mechanism for access remotely. We weren't that it's generally not as effective in terms of engaging the okay. people you're working with. But um, I did talk to Mary about that last night. So she and I were going to remind everybody of what our policies are and send those out again. And then hopefully have some update on when we can share that. Because there were some people that uh, weren't able to reschedule anything they normally would have done. So we'd like to be able to do that. Um, I did reach out to DOT last week about setting up a meeting. I have not received anything from Acting Director Leavenworth. So I will touch base with my contact down there again. Um, radar screen. So now that we've gotten through your sewer billing abatements and commitment, we do need to circle back around on the sewer billing policy. So tag your mm -hmm. it. Uh, I know. I know. And I would, I, what would be really well, helpful is maybe you sit down with Jennifer and, and sort of Go through some of the things that are sticky wickets. For you. Yes, I can do that. I did talk. I just so we had a couple things to clarify on some of the rebates mm -hmm. and abatements. was yeah, the, sorry the abatements, which was the um, I did get an answer on what's happening at the frontier, what's going on with that because mm -hmm. the numbers are all kind of out of whack and they've been trying for like six months to get a new meter. Everything's on back order. The well, low the low different. flow is moving backwards, so that's why the numbers are all messed up. Okay, um, so and then um, the pilot one we're working on as well because I think the multiplier is wrong on that. They they were you know the the bill said they that like sixty eight thousand gallons went to the went to the building and they put four hundred and something thousand on the lawn, which is a little backwards. So yeah. I think it's the multiplier of the first number is wrong. So we're so uh, Dan was out. Uh, from the water department was out last week he'll be back this week and is going to look into all those two items again and mainly the pilot one to get that squared away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but other than that we'll hit the rest rest of the items and i think we'll be okay. in pretty good shape good. Yep. Right. um i was someone one of my colleagues reached out to me about sharing services mm -hmm. and it plays directly into the conversations you've had all night yep. i think as resources are pinched from the municipal side of government we're going to see more and more of this happening mm -hmm. and in fact you know we've gone through these discussions before um i think we should consider discussing that at some point um it was actually veronique that reached out to me on behalf of another member a member of her select board up in conway and periodically i mean jeff and i have talked about it from sunderland so it may be that we think about what those services, what services can best be deployed. Um, it may be that- Work regionally? Yeah. Well, frankly, we may not have, they have fewer resources than we do. I don't know. You know Conway, Conway really struggles. And I know that from the other side of the river yeah. when I was in Asheville. Sure. Um, so it, it's worth a, a yeah, conversation. So it may about. be worthwhile doing what we did. Remember when we talked about police sharing services we had multiple meetings and we got together whether mm -hmm. we do it on zoom yeah. or not or whether, you, whether having it happens a conversation or not, at least is useful yeah. um, especially if people are reaching out to us 
I, I think where the shared services comes in really, you know, just what's happening with COVID. There's just not enough people out there. Right. And our best choices are either young people that are co just coming out of school or recently retired people that don't want a full-time job yeah. but would share hours, mm -hmm. a few hours here and a few hours there. And so it, we don't have, we're not big enough. This is where we're sort of, we have a lot of stuff happening here in town and, we, and, and it's really busy for our size population. But, you know, we don't, we, we have the same staff and we've had the same staff for years and years and years. No. So, but everything is 10 times more mm -hmm. work. So what I think we have to do is come up with ways that you can get really good qualified people and then, you know, you, they work some hours here and some hours here and you're paying more of a more going rate, but you're only, you're only buying, you're not buying a full-time person. Right. You're, and you're, you're not, a little bit more. you're not picking up the benefit package, which is about roughly Or sharing a third. some money on a benefit package right. or something. You're, yeah. you're, it's more, you know, eight hours here or 10 hours here and then, you know, 10 or 12 hours somewhere else. And, and you have a part-time job yeah. with a really good qualified person, but you're not paying for a full-time position. And that's and what that's, schools are doing. Schools you know, are doing that. We have this, you know, this issue where, you know, somebody or maybe a speech pathologist or something will, will be employed for four hours in Deerfield and two hours Sunderland, two hours up in Conway or something like that. And so and you can get that whole person. But that's how you get really a good person without having to mm -hmm. pay the full package of a full-time position. So let me give you the flip of that. The flip of that is it becomes more work for us. And right. often yeah. people want Deerfield to be the fiduciary. And at this point, I would say our capacity is reached. I know. And so I know. before we, and, and I bring this to you because I was asked by my colleague and I, I really want to make sure that she'll hear it in the grapevine, but I want to make sure that people understood that I brought the ask, but the cautionary piece of, of comment is that if that's the case, the structure of how we provide that support has got to change. Mm -hmm because we don't have those resources. It costs a lot more time and money. You know, grants are, are important in Deerfield, but they cost they, a lot of time and it's money. It's a lot of time. And that element, we do it through shared services for two major departments, the Senior Center and EMS. And those two things are, no, I'm, I'm just saying, this is, this is how, if this is going to continue and this is going to grow, all towns are going to be faced with the same we thing. Need to add. How do we come up with a methodology that meets what Carolyn and you just mentioned, Trevor, mm -hmm. but also meets the needs of our resource allocation right. here in the office. I agree. Because, you know, it may not, Greenfield's going to, if Greenfield's a fiduciary on, on they are, public health community. stuff, that Greenfield has more people. Right. But we've already run into capacity issues where we know we are facing the question of how we maneuver in a changing environment because there are community development things that you folks have wanted to see. Yeah. And, and we, we talked about it earlier. I, you know, Greg brought this up. He's brought it up multiple times, but there's elements of community development that include that bike lane conversation, but how do we facilitate a more recognizable presence? And, and frankly, how do we build that into a structure that is stressed? Mm -hmm. So, Very you know, stressed. that that's a piece that that I want to caution everybody with. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say there's some there's one other thing we need to really start thinking about, and that's budget work. Mm -hmm. Budget is budgets are going to go out probably Friday or Monday Great. to folks. The issue is, is we should probably chat um, at the next meeting if we can Absolutely. to discuss that because they'll be due on the 15th. You'll have one more meeting before they'll do mm -hmm. with their due, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And that's just a target number in my head. It could be give or take a day. Uh, can we, um, I really like the idea what we did last year with Julie, you know, having shared meetings with the finance committee. Um, Julie did a wonderful job last year and it really cut down on the time of our department heads having to do presentations to multiple committees because 
they are coming to the CIPC already. And then, you know, then their operational budget is before us and the finance committee. And by, by um, having it, especially for Kevin, who is, you know, maybe plowing snow or something, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot, and, and but everybody mm -hmm. is so busy now. Um, it is a lot easier to have the joint meeting. But I, I'm hoping, since they still are, as far as we know, they're having the MMA conference still. They are. I, that has traditionally always been our time to, to have talk breakfast. about it. Yes. What what changes? You know, because we go to those meetings and we see stuff and we think, well, you know, maybe there's something we need to. We're not. We're missing. Yeah. Or we could cut back on because mm -hmm. this is what the the you know best practices is now right. or something like that or. No, we usually do. I mean, have we just a, have a the idea is to go that. to you know take the workshop, do right. you know find out what's happening, and that's why I mean it wasn't that bad last you know to do the Zoom, but it was not the same experience. No, it was much better to be there. Yeah, it's better to network, find out what you follow up Absolutely. on, what's changing, and then how do we change our budget, and or 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 are we even aware of a savings that's happening because of what's going on. I mean, we don't we don't bring back money anymore like we used to, but we try to save money or be aware of how we're going to have to spend money. So, if we're if we're going to the MMA, I you know it's really worth having breakfast together again. And I, I always enjoyed that a lot. Plus, yeah. it's a good breakfast. Yeah, well, it really is. I, I Which one? <laughs> right downstairs in the hotel. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. They're so nice. They yeah, see they you are. every year. They're really and you're nice. Like, I know. And, and, and hopefully you know, we can still take there. over a whole table and we mm -hmm. can roll out the papers and yeah, you know. So I, I, I feel it's more relaxed and more, you know, relevant. Yeah. At that meeting, uh -huh. than, than trying to do it at night on top of our all of our other busy, nine o'clock. So because by, by then we're all tired, you know. All right, so that what that's telling me is you want to push back your budget response. Uh, no, I'm still, you know, I like to entertain and see week. them and look at them. And, it's, you know. Casey, it's only a week. I know that. Yeah. You know that. And we know what comes out of that meeting when we're at the, we do. When yeah. we go to the MMA conference, we learn things that we don't think about in our own little yeah. right. microcosm so of Massachusetts. I know. Yeah. So what I what everybody needs to understand though is if I put that memo out and one board isn't isn't responding, that can have an effect, a ripple effect on everybody else's um, compilation of numbers because they all come in right around the same time. So I'll talk to Brenda about it because well, we would the time like to frame. have them submitted. Yeah, so, so we, we can, can see them. So we can yeah. have our books for the MMA meeting. Yeah, we'd love to have the books. You want to take your books to the MMA meeting? Yeah. Really? Always. You want to lug that thing around? It's yes. this thick. Yes, Casey, I do. we usually do. Your so. budget books? Yes. Yeah. We I've do never budgets. seen you guys lug a budget book around. Yeah. I don't because I lug yeah. I lug the you briefcase with, been at that, with everything else around. That fancy restaurant. Kay, Kay, <laughs> Casey, you were not here when you started we were, lugging the budget books around. Right when we were lugging the budget book, and then we've had COVID. True. Last year, so That's you true. weren't here for that. So, yeah. If we're gonna, so what That's, I need to know from you guys, what, regardless of what that, if we're gonna meet a deadline, though. Yeah. No, if we're gonna if we're gonna meet a deadline, we need to have a chat about the budget before we start digging into it, really. And okay. then going What's through the MMA, you have a better idea of what could change. Is all mm -hmm. I'm saying. If that's how you want to do it. We still have to submit in the time frame that we give everyone else, if that's yeah. what you're saying. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. All we're doing you're is talking going... about our specific budget. Yes, I'm yes. talking about select board budget. Yes. Yes. budget. And yeah. all we're doing is going we can meet over about that with anytime. the... Because I still want. think the joint meeting with Julie's committee, you know, mm -hmm. Julie and the finance committee, is, is more productive. For all the budgets. For but everything. Then, then but we, I mean, we need ours. to take a position on ours. Yeah. And, you know, like the tree budget. You know, Kevin is perpetually underfunded for mm -hmm. his tree and, and what we need to do for the tree maintenance. Right. So let's have that discussion at the MMA meeting. How much are we going to increase that and mm -hmm. be on the same page so when we do meet with the finance committee, we can argue why, you know, we need the extra money. 
That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm not looking for, you know, everything in the final format. I just want us to be able to have the information so that we can be on the same page when we have a joint meeting and it's most productive. Do they, um, do we have a budget template already laid out and then we just got to kind of, when we look at what same we had Same budget last template year. as we yeah. had okay. before. So that's fine. Whenever, whenever you have those sheets, I'd love to look at them. She hasn't sent them out. That's the no, thing. We were waiting for this, the hearing. A couple weeks, she okay. said. We have to have that hearing, for snowboard board hearing about the glass comp. Oh, there's some gotcha. things that have come up that I talked to Mary about what, like yesterday. What time is that tomorrow? Yeah, it's it at tomorrow. 6. It will be at... You, you guys don't have right, a meeting. Right. It's... For them, the bylaw requires a personnel board Perfect. hearing. Perfect. Okay. So, That's great. Okay. All right. And so those are some of the things on that radar screen. Thank you. Okay. Um, is that it? Okay. Any public comment? No. No? Okay. No. I just wanted to comment and wish everybody a very happy holiday oh, season. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to have another meeting, meeting before christmas right yeah. i mean we might but you never know select board meeting so <laughs> what's that jen i said you never know yeah don't <laughs> say right. that don't <laughs> say <laughs> but i know i just it's been a crazy year and i just hope everybody oh, gets a, a a day or even a half a day to just sit back and enjoy their families and time and be nice to get a little snowfall but i don't know if we will no. <laughs> not <laughs> in time <laughs> Not a ton. I don't want Kevin out plowing. You know, one in the morning. I'm just saying it's nice to have a little He wants bit. a scheduled storm. No worries. Mood. I, look, mood I got snow. skis, That's man. It. I want to go snow. use them. I'm with, I'm with Carolyn on the mood snow. I'll go with that. It's not even mood snow. You can't go downhill on a mood snow, though. Okay. <laughs> you need a few inches. Next meetings. <laughs> Our next meeting will be December 29th, followed by January 12th. And 26. Okay. okay. I haven't put February in yet. That's okay. Did I say something? I put February in the January one. <laughs> there you go. Now we got to <laughs> add the rest of the six months in front of us. Oh. As long as we don't have a meeting before Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually stop mid year. I usually stop mid year. <laughs> Even I can't handle that. <laughs> No, what I wanted to say, I wanted to thank Jennifer and Pat Ooh. for helping yeah. set up those training sessions. And Jennifer worked really thank hard you, working Jennifer. with Mary thank to you, make Pat. sure all of that yeah. happened. So I wanted to take a moment to thank her oh, yeah. and thank you for you all for supporting it. Yes. And yes. we'll as we go through this budget season, this stuff is probably going to evolve, but we are going to yeah. have to keep these things up. No, I'm happy to, and and we can dive in and expand on certain areas of that. Yeah. It'll be good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Thank you all. He's looking at you. Motion to adjourn. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Carol. Hi, <laughs> <I> David. Hi, <laughs> Trevor. It's so funny. Thank you all. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs>